the Alabama Crimson Tide, and the South Carolina Gamecocks. Both teams 2-0 and in league play. The only two teams in the SEC to this point that are undefeated through two games. Well, Charles Davis once again joins us on the sideline, and Charles, this should be a fantastic game uh, specifically for those defense uh, aficionados. Yeah, you're right about that, Dave. You guys preach defense versus defense today, and we've got it. For Alabama, Salim Rashid, their middle linebacker, is also their leading tackler at 13 tackles and a sack last week against Arkansas. For South Carolina, their outside linebacker defensive end Kalimba Edwards is on a collision course with anything that's wearing white today. 14 tackles last week in the big win against Mississippi State. Both these guys are their leading tacklers. They're ready to get it on. We will keep a close eye on Kalimba Edwards today. This guy is, uh, I'm sure, a certain NFLer down the road. There's Dennis Franchoni, the head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Remember, he... He said that this team from the beginning was going to take time to develop, evolve into the kind of team he wants, and we're beginning to see that unfold with each and every game. Across the way, Lou Holtz. What can you say about Lou other than the fact that he took an 0-11 team and, well, he's four games shy of the 500 mark here in South Carolina after that 0-11 season. That is impressive. Oh, that's unbelievable. You would never have thought it. I mean, suffering through, you can imagine, 0-11. That is a player's nightmare. But, boy, have they turned it around. Freddie Millens back to return the kick. You see that 30.5 average. He is a big play man with big play capabilities. We'll see if he can uh, take one of those back to the house today. Well, a lot of wind at the back of South Carolina. They're hoping they can kick it through the end zone. They don't want to see Freddie Millens run this football back. Joey Bowers will kick off for... South Carolina, the freshman out of Somerville, South Carolina. Antonio Carter also back deep along with Millens, and we are underway. A booming kick that sends Millens all the way back to the end of the end zone. So Alabama will take it at their 20-yard line to open up the game. This Alabama offense averaging 20 points per game, which is 10th in the conference. They are 8th in passing. And they are fourth in rushing at 160 yards per game. Tyler Watts now making his fourth consecutive start here in the 2001 campaign. A couple of touchdowns, one interception. The coaches say that he is just very, very consistent. Well, you always want to get that first defensive series under your belt. That's what South Carolina does. They want to get three and out. That's their goal. Pitch to Galloway. Tripped up, maybe a yard. Willie Offord, number 20. Here's our Chevy offensive starting lineups. Freddie Millens, second all-time at Alabama in career receptions. He's in the top 10 in just about every category in terms of receiving and returning. Dante Ellington, the only returning offensive lineman to start in 2000, but he's had an up-and-down year to begin with. Coaches say we don't need to see him on television. When you see the <laughs> offensive yeah. lineman on television, that's usually not good. Millens in motion on second down. Watts throws it. Hits Millens. That'll be close to the first down, about a yard shy. And here's our Chevy defensive lineup. It's a relatively small defensive front three for the South Carolina team, but these guys have uh, gotten after it so far. The linebacking core, we got Kenny Harney back in the lineup after suffering a couple of injuries, but Kalimba Edwards, we talked about him in the pregame show and here to open up our telecast. He is a good one. And all of these guys in that secondary can hit you. Third down and one, four wide receiver, single setback is Galloway. And it's Tyler Watts who will pick up the first down. Now that's what Alabama wants to do. They want to move the chains. They want to keep consistency. Put those 8 to 10, 12 play drives in a row. Keep the ball away from South Carolina. This is just what they did is they just spread them out. Let the big man on big man. You can see they just caved it down the front. Langston Moore, 57. He had about three guys just wedging on him. Shotgun on first down. Watch fires. Has his receiver to... First down for Alabama as Sam Collins takes it out over the 40. Sheldon Brown on the stop for the South Carolina Gamecocks. And Dave, when you look at Tyler Watts, number 14, the first thing that jumps out at you is consistency. First of all, he took over for Andrew Zhao. 
you turn around and you say, hey, wait a minute, that's the guy who played last year. But Tyler Watts has got great consistency. He makes good uh, down situations. In other words, don't force the, force the ball in there. Don't try to make things that aren't there. Second down and ten. Millen takes the snap. Stopped by Rashad Faison. And that loses about six yards. Well, that was interesting. You, know, you talk about the way to get the ball in the hands of Freddie Millens, number 15. Snap it straight to him. Look at this. Comes out here. He tries to get outside, but they got great penetration. You've got to come after him. You know that Millens is not going to throw the football, or at least you don't believe he is. Now Watts takes back over. Officially a loss of seven. So second down and 17. It'll play action. Watts under pressure, scrambles out, being chased close to the 50, dives, fumbles the football. Brown can't cause the fumble. That was when the ball hit on the ground, it was dead. Boy, it's going to be close to the first down, Dave. Absolutely. He is right about the 48 of South Carolina, and that is where the first down marker is. Watch the decision here. He's pressured. Now he comes out here. Is he going to run out of bounds? No, he's going to get everything he can. Look at this. Up in the air. Get as much as you can. That's a lot of courage. You don't run out of bounds in that situation. Oh, oh did he fall oh, all over there. So they give him the first down. He made it by about a half a yard. Ray Hudson checks in at tailback for Alabama. And here is Hudson on the pitch. Hudson inside the 45 to about the 41 of South Carolina. Andre Goodman comes in to make the stop. The senior out of Greenville, South Carolina. And you know what's interesting? When you can run the, run the football like this, you can really play well. Jonathan Martin makes a pitch it. Now he's got a one-on-one. -on -one. Just put your head down, pick up those yards. When you get to the outside and that running game is going, it opens up the pass. Then you can be selective. But you can't be selective if you don't first establish the run. And they also put him in a good situation at second down and four. <sighs> Here's Millens near side. Millens couldn't get the corner. Big pile up right in front of that South Carolina bench. This is really an interesting play selection. A lot of swing passes. Nothing long. Just trying to keep, just keep on eating away at him. There, of course, is Charlie Strong, defense coordinator for South Carolina. This is what he did not want to have happen. He did not want to see Alabama come out, put together that 8, 10, 12 play yard drive. Yeah, Lou Holt said his defense had to force some more three and outs. And this is the ninth play of this opening drive, which started at the Alabama 20. First and 10. Galloway with a couple. Galloway, 6'1", 225 out of Millington, Tennessee. Averaging 4.4 yards per carry. He does have one touchdown today. Here's what Alabama's offense has done. They've been matched defensively in terms of touchdowns. The two touchdowns last week against Arkansas by that Bama defense. Uh, they've struggled. They've gone well 20 to 20. Yeah. Get to that red zone. It's um, been a hiccup or two. Yeah, well, that uh, field gets a lot shorter in there. It's almost like it's an extra defensive back when you're inside that corner. Sam Collins can't handle the pass. Sheldon Brown on the coverage. And Dave, this is the situation that Charlie Strong told us about. There is a flag on the, on the field all the way across. Didn't see that. But this is the situation where Charlie Strong said, hey, we have got to stop them on third down. And they are talking with South Carolina. Ineligible receiver downfield, is that? That's our referee, Doyle Jackson. Dennis Franchoni getting a answer to what exactly happened. Charlie Strong wants to decline yeah. the penalty. Ineligible downfield by the offense. That penalty is declined. Third down. That'll bring up third down and seven from the Carolina 33. Now if it's me, I go after Tyler Watts. I go after him. I bring some pressure from the edge. If I'm Alabama, I might look for Freddie Millens on that little curl inside. He's pretty dangerous. Oh, and Watts saw it. He called an audible. And it, it appears the official had stopped the clock. A delay of game against Alabama. Flag dropped down about the 14-yard line. 
So Alabama will have another chance at it. It'll just be third down and 12 now. Yeah, that, that actually works for the favor of the offense because they're going to give the football up. Now that Foul is a dead done. ball. Delay of game by the offense. Penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Still third down. Let's check in with Charles. Alabama very fortunate on the last play, guys. If Sheldon Brown picks up the ball right away, he picks it up and goes the other way. He just focused on the man and knocking the pass down. Well, here it is again, third down. Here comes the blitz. Flag is down in the backfield. Watts has plenty of room. He's inside the 25. Run out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Another flag comes in late. DeAndre, or excuse me, Antoine Neesmith runs him out of bounds. Well, this is going to be an interesting call. You're going to see illegal motion in the, for Alabama, but then you're going to see, I believe, a foul on the sideline, which may be a dead ball foul. We'll see what Doyle Jackson has in store for us. We have an illegal motion foul by the offense. An incidental face mask by the defense. These fouls offset, still third down. So we'll just do it again. It was so much fun the first and second time. We'll do it a third time. South Carolina has 13 penalties this year and only one on the defensive side of the football. Now let's see if we see the face mask ready. Incidental means you put your hand on the face mask and it comes off. An excellent call. Four wide receivers. Millen's in motion. Watts fires. Oh. Pass is caught down at the 10-yard line by Trianda Slew. The sophomore from Phoenix City, Alabama, snuck behind the secondary and was wide open. I'm wondering if Faison touched that football. Let's see if we can see it. Watch number 11, Faison, see if he doesn't touch the football. Now he's open right oh. there. He's wide open. But I think Faison might have gone up and hit the football. If he didn't, he came awfully close to it, number 11. Luke somehow didn't have anybody around him. That was a gain of 29. You see the possessions inside the red zone. Only one touchdown in eight possessions. Couple of tight ends. Here's the option. Watts keeps it. Watts to the goal line. Stopped there at about the one. Andre Goodman stopped him from scoring the touchdown. Boy, and Watts puts such pressure on you. When he comes out on that little option play right there, he's reading the, the defensive end and the linebacker. One rushing touchdown in the last 20 quarters. You have to go back to 2000 game against LSU to find a rushing touchdown. Watts already 28 yards on the ground. Here's the handoff. Galloway, loose football. Down at the two-yard line. Who's got it? Well, that ball came out right away. Alabama retains possession. Oh, that would have been an early heartbreaker. Ahmad Galloway. And Dave, watch the hit right here. Watch Galloway. You hit on the helmet. See how the ball comes right out there? Scramble for it. Good heads up play there. That might have, might have been Justin Smiley came up with that football. The left guard, 78. Third and goal from the two. Remember, this drive started at the Alabama 20. Donnie Lau in motion. Watts stopped shy of the goal line. Rashad Faison stepped up and made the big play. And Alabama will go for three. That keeps that stat lock, that one rushing touchdown. Incredible series right here. Good penetration. Get there. Don't let go. Hope for help. Get some help there. They come up. Make a huge stop. Neil Thomas, who we saw a couple of weeks ago, win the game basically against Vanderbilt. With four field goals. This is a 19-yarder. He's 6 of 8 on the season. This kick is up, and it is perfect. So Alabama... Once again, puts together a solid drive, but they just can't put it in the end zone. It's three to nothing. Alabama back after work from your local station. 
Alabama goes 79 yards and eat up nearly seven minutes on the clock, but all they could get was a field goal, but they'll take it because this is going to be one of those games, I believe, that will come down to a field goal. Derek Watson back to return the kickoff. He leads the Southeastern Conference by two-tenths of a yard over Freddie Millens at 30.7 yards per return. This is Corey Alexander, however, number three, who's got lightning speed. Flag is down. Alexander fumbles the football. It appears South Carolina has it. We'll see what that flag is, but it appears it'll go against South Carolina. Excuse me, Alabama comes away with yeah. the football. Absolutely. Did I see a did the official yeah. give the signal? Yeah, he signaled Alabama, though. I'm not sure that he didn't mean the penalty was against South right. Carolina. There's the hand in the back against South Carolina, but I did not see Alabama come up with that football. The fouls are illegal blocking the back by the returning team. They are declined. First down. So Alabama did come away with the football. Oh, my goodness, what a huge break. You want to be a punter? I mean, you want to be a kicker? Look at this. A lot of the lot of extracurricular activity downfield. I mean, now one helmet comes off. You stop? No, you go get him again. Let's see if we can see where the ball comes out. The flag's already for the back. Now, all I see is South Carolina players on top of it. Oh, there's the ball right there. Look, they're still going after it again. Put your helmet back on. Let's try it again. <laughs> Jonathan Martin and Neil Thomas going at it, but that's irrelevant to this point for Alabama because they got the ball inside the 25. Watts, pump fakes, has to run it. He's got some room on the near side. Watts out of bounds at the 10-yard line. That'll be a Bama first down. Watts on that last drive, Dave, accounted for 28 yards rushing. He actually had a 20-yard rush as well, which is the longest play given up by the uh, South Carolina defense this season. The previous long was a 15-yard run back in the opening game against Boise State. So certainly things are changing. Oh, absolutely. And when you have a running quarterback, it puts such a pressure on the defensive line. You're fighting your tail off trying to get up there, forcing him to pass early, and all of a sudden he scoots up there and runs with the football. Santonio San Beard, number 34, just about the six-yard line, maybe the seven. Seven and a half minutes, and Alabama has to go in the first quarter, and Alabama has another great scoring opportunity. They have been inside the red zone nine times, but only one touchdown. Well, now if you're on defense, you're saying hold them to a field goal try, and it doesn't hurt you. If you're Alabama, you're saying don't stop unless you get seven points. Alabama's forced five turnovers, and they've scored on four of those. A couple of tight ends in the game. Big hit by who else? Kalimba Edwards, number 55, goes nose to nose with Ahmad Galloway. And Dave, there are certain leaders on every team, and Kalimba Edwards, number 55, is one of them. Big man, gets in there, makes play, just makes things happen. Watch 55, just come right up in there, see him just get in there. And one thing South Carolina does is they tackle very well. They don't break tackles when you play against them. Alabama, third and goal from the five. I wonder if the clock ran out. I saw a flag. Oh, you know what that was? That illegal. was illegal separately participation. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, you can't break the huddle with 12 men and run one off. Illegal substitution foul by the offensive team. Penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Still third down. Well, Alabama, of course, in terms of penalties, have had their fair share this year, and today they've already got a couple of big ones. Dennis Franchoni wants a timeout to talk this over with his club. This is a big third down coming. It's third and ten. So Watson, Coach Fran, try to get it together. Alabama leads it 3 nothing. Back after a word from a local station. Alabama took the opening kickoff, marched at 79 yards, got a field goal. They kicked off, recovered a fumble on the return. Now they're kind of stalling at this point, third down and 10. Look at the yardage. South Carolina has yet to run an offensive play in this one. 
And Alabama's had the ball from the get-go, but a big third down. Watts back to pass, flushed out of the pocket. Edwards chasing Watts, he fires to the end zone, it's incomplete. Flag down at the 20-yard line. We'll wait and see what that's about. The intended receiver was Freddie Millen, so holding call against Alabama. Boy, Kalimba Edwards, when he's running after you, he's gaining. Number 55 plays middle the linebacker. Now watch this. He's running after him. He is gaining on him. Slide along, slide along. Bring him down right there. Evidently, it was a hold up in the front line, but I think you decline that. Just let him let him try the field goal. And if you're a defensive player, you win this series. Hold him to a field goal. Foul is an illegal block in the back oh. by the offense. That foul is declined. It is fourth down. So the penalty declined, and here comes Neil Thomas. He connected from 19. This will be a 27-yarder. And Thomas is good again. The junior out of Clinton, Mississippi, has been almost perfect this year. He's now 8 of 10. And field goal tries and perfect on point after. So Alabama's defense has given up some yardage, but they've held tight inside the red zone. Bama leads it by a couple of field goals. We'll come back to Columbia right after this. The old bend but don't break philosophy. Charlie Strong's defense paid off there. They've yet to give up a touchdown. Alabama's had a couple of good opportunities, but they will take the six. Derek Watson, Ryan Brewer back to return kickoffs. Ryan averaging 20 and a half yards per return this year after Corey Alexander fumbled the football on the last kickoff. He is now on the sidelines. Coach Holt says his team can't afford to make mistakes, and Corey Alexander did, and it cost him a field goal. Neil Thomas, or excuse me, Lane Beard to kick off. Here's another opportunity. Loose football picked up at the 30. Scary moment for Gamecock fans inside williams Bryce Stadium. Andrew Pinnock is the one who finally put his hands on it. A pretty good field position for South Carolina after the awkward return. And for Coach Lou Holtz, it's been how long have we been on the field on defense? It seems like that's an eternity for a head coach. Yeah, run an offensive play. I mean, there's only six minutes left in the first quarter. Bill Petty has been... Pretty flawless this year. 64% completion rate, two touchdowns, no interceptions. He's thrown 68 passes this year without an INT. Brian Scott out over the 35. Here's our Chevy Gamecocks offensive lineup. Andrew Pinnock in that backfield had 97 yards in the last game. That's against Mississippi State in Arkansas. Derek Watson also back there. They want him to get a lot more touches today. This offensive line has really kind of molded together. They've got a little bit of depth as well. This is a pretty good line anchored by Melvin Page. Second down and five. Petty goes up top, looking for Scott, or excuse me, Willis Ham on the reception. But it was out of bounds, flagged down at about the 38-yard line. This is throw it up high and let your wide receiver go up. Good position. Now, if he just gets that foot down, look at that foot come down, clearly out of bounds. No flag. No flag. Well, that'll bring up third down. Here's our Chevy defense. This is a pretty good lineup for Carl Torbush, the defensive coordinator. Kendall Moorhead, Aries Monroe, Jared Johnson, Kenny King, big, fast, and mean. And Salim Rashid anchors that middle. And in the secondary, Miles, Dixon, Wayne Bacon, the former walk-on. Also, we'll see Sean Tu Ray who's back after missing a game. And a flag down at the 28 as Derek Watson dropped the ball. I think Melvin Page might have gotten away. Well, he didn't get away because there's a yellow flag. But this was the hold of the year for Melvin Page. He's beating around the outside, number 72, and he just rips down the defensive end. See if we can see it over here on the right-hand side, right there. That's what you call a takedown. Right here, 72. Look at this, just gets by you, just pull him down. 
That's Brooks Daniels, number 18. He's got not big, but he's got great speed. Got around the outside. You got to protect your quarterback. This is exactly what Lou Holtz wanted to avoid. Have his defense on the field for a long time, and his offense goes three and out. Freddie Millens back to return the Tyler Dean punt. Fair catch called for by Freddie at the 29-yard line. That's where Alabama will take over for their third possession of the game with 5.25 to go here in the first quarter. When you're on the road to watch SEC football this season, plan on eating at Huddle House, where you can order their big house breakfast and lunch platters anytime, 24 hours a day. Big meals for Big Dave Rowe. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say that. I looked up and smiled. Yeah. <laughs> you ate there last week. Did yes, you get there this week? No, I didn't get there this week, but I ate there last week. So we did. A little option play. Oh, and a big hit on the near side. Ahmad Galloway slow to get up. Jonathan Martin, the junior out of Columbia, South Carolina, steps okay. up. You talk about inside position right in there. This is a helmet stuck right in the chest. There he is. Watch 30. Left your screen. He's going to come. He gets inside position. Oh, man. That was helmet against helmet. You see him right in your screen. Look at that shot coming inside. Now he gets inside position on the wide receiver because he reads the run so quickly. Charles, how did it look down there? That's a tough play, guys, because of the relationship between the pitch man and the quarterback. Actual defender with not much room can play quarterback to pitch a lot easier. Delayed handoff goes to Beard. He gets a couple of yards, but he's well shy of the first down. That'll bring up about third and eight. Kenny Hardy on the stop. Look at our scoreboard. Oklahoma over Kansas State. A couple of touchdowns. Northwestern, Michigan State, Big Ten action. Nebraska just underway with Missouri. Central Florida up by a touchdown. And a one-point advantage for the Tar Heels over the Wolfpack. Watts under pressure, loose football. He goes down inside the 20 at the 19. Dave, what Tyler Watson did that time, he just zeroed in on his wide receiver. He never saw backside pressure. And if you're a, if you're a safety, you can read the quarterback's eyes. He's looking this way. See his head never go up the other way? All of a sudden, you just get that backside pressure ripping the football out of there. That was Jonathan Alston who came and uh, caused that fumble. Fortunately for Alabama, Watson is back on top. Loss of 11. Fourth down and 19. Beard gets the punt off. Flag is down as he gets taken to the ground. I'll tell you, you talk about going after the kickers. South Carolina's going after the kickers. This is the major penalty. This isn't the bumping into them. If you can't block it, you've got to avoid them. Ted Crawford, you just got to, you got to miss them. If you can't get the ball, if you're not sure that you're going to get it, you got to miss them. This was fourth down and what, about 18 yards to go? Foul is a personal foul. Roughing the kicker by the defense. And this 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. Well, again, you've got the right of your left of your screen. If you don't get the ball, you can't go into the kicker like that. You try to aim in front of him where the ball's going to come off his foot, not into the kicker. He's actually right into the kicker. There's no being blocked into the kicker anymore. They do. did away with that several years ago. So Blaine Bearden's all right. That was a pretty good shot. And off goes to Galloway. Gets a couple of yards. Columba Edwards in on the stop. If you ever want to test out a team, you put your defense out there three times in a row. Now they've stopped them, held them to two field goals, and now you give them back the ball again. Uh, that's quite a call on your defense. Fortunately for South Carolina, they've got some people in there that uh, and Kalimba Edwards being one that can lead them. Bearden had a punt block last week. And that's why South Carolina went after it with such vengeance. Second down. Pass near side. Batted up in the air. Caught by Millens. He's a couple of yards shy of the first down. 
Dave, this is a South Carolina team that came in here, nothing real fancy. Lou Holtz said he was going to keep it offensively close to the vest early in the season. He's done that. They haven't turned the ball over. They haven't committed a lot of penalties. Boy, their offense isn't on the field. They've turned it over. They've committed penalties. This is not the start I think Lou was expecting today. Absolutely. You don't want to give teams opportunities, additional opportunities. Big down here, they've got to stop him, pull him up short. They have converted two of five third down opportunities today. Loose football. Oh, South Carolina had it. Lost it. Do they have it again? They will give it to the Gamecocks. Jonathan Martin recovers the fumble. What they did, Dave, is they blitzed on a run down. They covered every gap. You slide your line into a gap, the linebackers fill it. If you can split it, you go for a lot of yards. You see every gap, but he never got the handoff. You see the ball there? Watch goes after it. Heads up, play there. That's just pulling the football back out. That's just taking it away. But you see the ball never get in the, in the, in the uh, running back's hands. Galloway never got the football. Boy, have we seen the football hit the grass today quite a bit. Ryan Brewer, far side. Brewer has some space. Inside the 30, takes three or four tied players to finally bring him down. That'll be very close to a first down. I think he has it. Well, good blocks downfield. Gauss on one of them, and I think that might have been Bolden on the other. He, he was blocking on Bolden. Scott, 82, is getting good one. Look at this, downfield. There at the top of the field, that's the good block by Gauss right there. 82, that's Brian Scott. He gets a block downfield, too. South Carolina, first and ten. Here's Watson. And the Moorhead brings him down. Watson a year ago. Impressive, impressive season. He went over 100 yards six times a year ago. Averaged 166 yards per game, total offense, which led the Southeastern Conference. But really off to a slow start. Colton wants to get him to pick ball more. That pass is complete at the 20. That's about a yard shy. Willis Ham makes the reception. Well, you can't play that deep on the coverage. You've got to come up a little bit. Now, let me tell you, from a, from a momentum standpoint, if South Carolina can punch this in, you've called your defense to do everything. They've responded. If your offense can pop it in there, then your defense is bolstered back up. You go back out there with a lot of emotion. Third and about a yard. We are under one minute here in the first quarter. Cool house backfield. Pennick gets the handoff. The 250 pounder out of Bloomfield, Connecticut, picks up the Carolina first down. You know, I just like Andrew Pennick. I just like the way he runs. It's tough. He doesn't take any quarter. He doesn't shy away from anything. Sticks his head in there. He just loved that. Andrew Pennick went for 97 yards against Mississippi State. And last year versus Alabama, didn't have a, a great game. Flags are down again. Oh, you don't want to move in here. I think that might have been Wharton over there, went on the snap count. Now what he's doing, he talks to the officials saying, hey, wait a minute, they're calling snap calls over there. That was a dead ball. Movement of the offensive line. Five yards from the previous spot, still first down. Skip Holtz, the offensive coordinator, assistant head coach. Says that uh, he's been given the reins to open it up a little bit, but he hadn't had an opportunity today. But here we go with four wide receivers on first and 15. Watson met behind the line of scrimmage by Herschel Bolden, a junior from Dothan, Alabama. And if you're a defensive corner, you don't wait for the block to get to you. You attack. And that's what Bolton does on this play. Watch him. He comes up underneath the block. See the block's coming out there. Now he just gets up underneath it. See Wharton trying to get out to him. He doesn't get to him because he attacks on the play. Charles. Yeah, he never backed off. It's like a cover two, which is a hard corner. Dave Rowe knows about those hard corners, those guys he played with at the Raiders. They're underneath it. He beat the blocker before the block had a chance to get him, an offensive lineman. Well, Charles, that'll do it for the first quarter, a quarter that Alabama 
maintained possession for nearly the entire time. They lead it six to nothing. A lot of emotion in williams Fry Stadium. We'll come back after a message from Advance Auto Park. Alabama behind a couple of field goals lead South Carolina six to nothing. We are just about set for the second quarter, and in the first quarter, Alabama had the football 11 minutes and 43 seconds. But here is a second down and 19 for South Carolina with four wide receivers. Over the middle, bobble, and dropped. That would have been six, Derek Watson. That's twice today Derek has dropped it. And what did Lou Holtz tell us yesterday? The best hands on the team. He tried to run with it before he caught it. But look at the read right there by Petty. Seeing that backer come on, you got to catch that football. Again, perfect pass right on the fingertips. You just got to concentrate. I think uh, Derek Watson looked up and saw the goalpost and said, oh, man. A great read by Petty. Seeing that pressure, and that's what you want to do when you go four wideouts. Blitz. On third downs this year, South Carolina's been good. 48% conversion rate. Petty has plenty of time. Fires to the corner of the end zone. Just throws it up for grabs. It is incomplete, intended for Willis Ham. That'll bring up fourth down. Herschel Bolden on the coverage. Here's our Cat Rental Store first quarter stats, and they look like this. Pretty lopsided, as you might yeah, imagine. Absolutely. That's what happens when you have the ball, what, 21 or 22 plays in a row. A 43-yard field goal attempt coming up for South Carolina, Daniel Weaver sends it through the uprights and he remains perfect this year. Six of six. His longest coming into this was 35 yards and he hits a 43-yarder. So the battle of the field goals right now being led by the Crimson Tide with 14.42 to go here in the second quarter. This doesn't look like it's going to make it, but just all the counts as it goes far enough. Good contact, good line push up front. And look at this ball, just dying, but it clears the goalpost. Inches as good as a mile in that game. Dave, we came in here a couple of years ago, and Lou Holtz was afraid to even kick a field ball. Absolutely. And now he's got uh, Daniel Weaver, who's 6 of 6. It was 3 of 3 against Mississippi State. That drive was eight plays, just 12 yards, and ate up two and a half minutes. The offense has to be on the field more the way the defense has been on the football field in the first quarter. Well, you wear your defense out, putting them out there that much. But, you know, you look at momentum swings. Alabama that time answered the call because they stopped them to a field goal try. They got great field position. Freddie Millens, Antonio Carter. Back to receive the Joey Bowers kick. Bowers with a strong leg. Sends it about four deep. Carter will bring it out. And cannot get to the 15. That is where the tide will take over. Well, number 17 ranked UCLA visited Tuscaloosa for the first time ever to open the season. Andrew Zow's 71-yard touchdown pass to Freddie Millens in the final minutes wasn't enough as the Bruins ruined Coach Fran's first game. Then Coach Fran got his first win the following week as both Vanderbilt and Alabama did not get into the end zone, but Neil Thomas kicked four field goals for the 12-9 win. Then last week, the defense scored a couple of touchdowns against Arkansas, and that was all the Bama would need. They went on to beat the Razorbacks 31-10. How about this? The Bama defense accounted for 129 yards last week on those four turnovers. It's Antonio Beard powering his way out over the 20. Dennis Franchione came in and uh, took over this program after that 3-8 and eight season and knew there were gonna, going to be some uh, NCAA accusations thrown at this program, which have since occurred. And he has remained above it all and has gotten this team pretty focused. And talking to him and his coaching staff, uh, their one goal is to get better every single play, every single week, and I, I think we've seen that. Collins with a catch that could be good for a first down over the 25, and it is. Well, when French when he came in, Coach Fran came in, he came from a program where he turned it around at TCU. They had nothing. 
He just turned that program around and made him a winner. How about this? You know, in 2000 at TCU, Coach Franchoni's team led the nation in total defense, scoring defense, and kickoff returns. We're seeing some of that evolve here with this team. They're good on kickoff returns. Their defensive package is pretty good. Their scoring defense is good. Here's Galloway. Galloway may have lost a couple of yards, but a flag down at the 25. Andre Island in on the stop for the Gamecocks. Holding against the offense. Boy, boy, they, in Alabama, they just can't have these penalties. And I'll tell you one thing, if you're, a, if you're a head coach, it just grinds your heart out. Well, coming into this one, Dave, Alabama had 27 penalties for 170 yards. That's fourth most in the league. And Coach Fran told us that he had to implement some penalties for these yeah. teams on, on the team for getting flagged. 20 push-ups per penalty. By the offense, penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot, still first down. Of course, they opened up against UCLA and, and was uh, kind of a, a mess in that department. We may be able to see it. Right? Oh, that's a good hold right there. 75. Yep. I'll have to finish up my thought on that penalty story in just a moment. Tyler Watts on the option. Tyler gets the corner. Watts out to the 30-yard line where he's brought down. That is about six yards shy of the first down. Now Dave, when you when you run an option play, it's so dependent upon that quarterback making the read of the backer. If the corner comes up and makes the force, you don't have the touch. Now, again, watch. He's going to come down the line. When he comes down the line, he's got to read the backer on the outside. Right there. You see the guy's taking the pitch right there. He's going to take the pitch. So what he does is he turns up. Now, you can't get back and make that tackle. And he just stretches it forward for the uh, additional yardage. But you've got to read that pitch play. If he takes that pitch, you turn up. Here's Beard. It's a yard or two. That'll bring up a third down and about five. But Coach Fran did, going back to those penalties, he made his team do 20 push-ups every time they were flagged for a penalty. Against Vanderbilt, he said, hey, if you guys have five or less, we won't make you do any. If you have more than five, it's double. double team double. came in after the game, only had four penalties. That's what they, could, they couldn't quit talking about. But they came in and said, hey, Coach, only four penalties. <laughs> Passes caught, first down, Sam Collins. To about the 37-yard line. Sheldon Brown runs him out of bounds. But it didn't work last week, Dave. 113 penalties last week. So they ended up having to do 160 push-ups. You have to know where the marker is if you're a wide receiver. Look at that. Right just past the marker. And I really like Tyler Watson. I like his decision-making out there. But you're right. You go back about the penalties. As you, what you do is you 260, try to... 260, yeah. my math was But I was going to say, what you do is you try to make a game out of it. Here's Watts. Catches the corner. Watts into South Carolina territory, pitches the ball out of bounds. Tyler Watts was looking for the trailing tailback, Ahmad Galloway, and pitched it out of bounds. Really not a, an, you never want to give up the ball, but he was pitching it to the boundary. Now, I believe that you have to make the quarterback pitch the football. You can't let him keep on turning up. What he's doing is he's reading again, reading the outside backer right there. Number 11, you see how he forces him? He forces him to take that pitch. Now, watch this at the tail end. He tries to flip it outside. They're lucky they came away with that ball. Charles. Hey, guys, you remember the old days of the Alabama wishbone under Bear Bryant? That was coached where the trail back would continue downfield with the run, with the quarterback keeping that pitch relationship. I don't think they're doing it as much nowadays in this type of option attack. A gain of 32 for the Crimson Tide. Here's Watts. To the corner. Touchdown, Alabama. Jason McCadley. A 31-yard touchdown strike, and Tyler Watts is in control here in the first half. Well, what makes this play work is the time of it. Watts could have sat back there and eaten a sandwich. He faked a little play action, took back. He watched McAdley come all, watch this, look how long. No penetration, slide over here. Now look at McAdley all the way back across the field, wide open, no coverage on him. You just can't have that much time. You can't sit back there and wait. Only McCadley, second catch of the season. It goes for 31 yards, his first touchdown of the season. Here's the point after. It is up and good. 
So Alabama opens up a 10-point lead on the Jason McCadley touchdown reception from Tyler Watts. Tyler Watts has been the man in williams Bryce Stadium here in the first half. Back after this. Alabama leads it by 10, 11.48 to go in the second quarter from williams Bryce Stadium. That Charlie Strong defense has been on the field 14 minutes and 37 seconds so far today. Lane Beard will kick it off. Ryan Brewer, Darren Watson back to return this kick, and it is returnable. It'll be Watson about a yard deep. Derek bounces, but tied up at the 21-yard line, 22-yard line, and that is where South Carolina will come out and try to get something going. Let's check in with Charles, who uh, has more on Kendall Moorhead, who we are, uh, those in the SEC, glad to see him back on the football field. As well, as well they should be, especially the people at Alabama. Kendall Moorhead blew out his Achilles tendon last year in preseason. Didn't play all of last year, obviously weakened the tie defense. He's back there wondering how good he was going to be. Two and a half sacks last week against Arkansas. I'd say pretty darn good. And off to Watson. Out over the 25. Daniels and Rasheed combined for the stop. You know, Dave, the time for, for Carolina is not to panic. Total yards is incredible. Look at that, 230 to 26. But don't panic. Don't get away from what you've done well. Stay with your game plan. You thought about using Watson, getting them 18 to 20 carries. Still get them 18 to 20 carries. But you've got to take the pressure off this defense. You've got to move the chain. Last your side. That goes to Matthew Thomas, the true freshman from Pearson, Georgia, with his third catch of the season. Thurman Ward on the stop. Thurman Ward, a guy that coming out of high school had verbally committed to South Carolina, but ends up signing with the Crimson Tide eventually, and uh, he's on the football field at a 60-yard touchdown interception against Arkansas last week. Also, the friends with Freddie Billings in high school. Corey Alexander out around the right side. He's about four yards shy of the first down. Rasheed goes to make the stop. They want to see what it's like playing middle linebacker. Watch number 11, Rasheed. Runs the line just all the way down line, chases him out of bounds. He's trying to get to the sideline. When you've got that kind of range, that's why they moved him to the middle. Look at that, 13 tackles. That's his dark and 225 pound junior out of Birmingham. Here's Andrew Pinnock pounding his way for the Carolina first down. A flag, or a couple of flags are down in that. Alabama secondary. Rashid makes the stop on the play. We'll wait for the flags, however. That flag is from about 20 yards from the football. So another penalty against Alabama. Coach Holtz trying to figure out whether or not to take it. Well, it would have been first down. I think with the penalty, it's still going to be first down. What was it, too many men on the field? I'm not sure. So we can tell right now. Foul is 12 players on the field by the defense. Penalty is 15 yards. Yardage is up in the first half. So South Carolina moves into Alabama territory. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Petty hands it to Pinnock. Pinnock tripped up with that line of scrimmage. The front four, Moorhead, King, Johnson, and Monroe. Pretty active group. They've got some size in the likes of Kenny King at 280, Moorhead 290, Johnson 275, Aries Monroe. But the other le that left end goes only 240, but he's packing about a 43-inch vertical lead. I know. When I heard that, I went 43 inches. You realize how high that is? I've never heard of anybody go. That's Michael Jordan. Kendall Moorhead, another tremendous athlete, even with that bad Achilles. Petty. Pump fakes. Has a wide open Scott. That'll be a touchdown for Carolina. What Phil Petty did that time, great quarterback fake, fake down to number 19, Goff. Everybody bid on the fake, he found Scott 
stepped on the scene and delivered the football. Credit his offensive line for giving him a little time. Also credit Skip Holtz because what he did is he stayed with his game plan. Nobody was near Scott. Ryan Scott with his second touchdown reception of the season. He had one against Georgia as well. Daniel Weaver's point after is up and good. And we've got 23 points on the board here early in the second quarter. Kind of shocking. We thought this would be a defensive struggle, but Bill Petty finds Brian Scott. Alabama leads by three. We'll be back after a word. Only the second touchdown catch for a touchdown the Alabama defense has given up this year. But Alabama could have used it. They were struggling offensively because they just didn't have the football. It's a three-point game. Bowers kicks off, and that'll go to Freddie Millens. Millens out over the 30 to the 32-yard line, and his average of 30 yards per return will stay intact. Tackle made by Jermaine Lemon. Dave, let's take another look at this play and see why it works. First of all, you're going to see Watts right there. He's going to fake the ball out here. Again, look at, I mean, excuse me, Petty. What he does is he fakes the ball out there. Scott is on this diagonal right here. Here's Scott. He's on that diagonal right there. He's just going to burn him right there. You see how the corner squatted down? He bit on the fake that Petty had thrown out into the flat. That little head fake and arm fake. Bit on it, squatted down, and never could recover and cover Scott. Six plays, 78 yards. Loose football. Who's going to come away with it? That is a fourth or fifth time today we have seen the ball hit the turf. That'll be Alabama football second down. Well, you got to hit the pocket. you got to put it right in the belly. See, he hits him up in the chest. Just can't put the ball up there. You've got to put it, you raise that arm up, you make a basket. It's, just, it's one of the old basic principles of football, and you place the ball in the basket. Tyler Watts, 98 yards passing, 75 rushing. He has had a great day, and that rushing yard includes a sack he took of about 15 yards. Watts, under pressure, has some time. Fires, pass caught at midfield. Antonio Carter, the junior from Tallahassee, runs clear across the field to get open. Well, he can run clear across the field because he's got a lot of time. You have to credit this offensive line of Alabama for giving him a lot of time. Again, here comes the route. He's coming all the way across the field. Watch this. Now, your quarterback's in trouble. Raise your hand. Show him where you are. There he is. You see big target? Nice delivery there by Watts. Carter <laughs> having a good season. With Galloway. He's close to a first down. Hard driving run from Ahmad Galloway. Tackle made by Faison in that secondary. Rashad. Came into the game with 24 total tackles. It's Charlie Strong. Don't forget at halftime, we'll be taking a look at the Alltel halftime stats and much, much more. Charles Davis will be along as well. Interesting, interesting ball game. A lot of yards have been racked up in this one. We didn't think that uh, that would be the case. No, we thought, uh, we thought we'd see a defensive throw. Oh, there's another fake. Batted in the air secondary by Andre Goodman his third interception of the season Jermaine Levin may have tipped the ball up in the air and gave Goodman the opportunity to catch it absolutely watch Lemon number 36 get a hand up they were doing the exact same thing they were doing that little fake now throw deep. look at Lemon right there gets the hand up then what you do is you yell hot hot everybody reacts to the ball and they intercept it Big turnaround for South Carolina. Goodman has been solid at that corner spot. Now three interceptions this season. Flags are down. Alabama may have jumped. Flag on the far side as well. So we'll hold off on that decision. Ryan Scott with the catch. The flags on both sides. Well, what you want to do is you want to continue this play. If you're on offense, you say, hey, maybe it's a defensive penalty. You continue the play. I don't know what this is. That was the offsides. That was the first part, so that's why you continue. Now, what happened? Was the other play the same thing? It might have been the same thing, the other flag. 
it appears that Alabama no. was the guilty party on that occasion. Talking to Phil Petty is our referee today, Doyle Jackson. Well, this isn't hard. You take the penalty. Foul is offside by the defense. Penalty is accepted. Five yards from the previous spot. Still first down. Come on, guys. Let's go. Charles, what do you have? Hey, guys, you, you understand about resiliency. This South Carolina team, remember last week they were supposed to fly to Mississippi State on Wednesday and couldn't get out because of plane problems, flew on game day and still played? You don't think a 13-3 deficit is going to bother a team like that, do you? Absolutely not. This team has faced a lot of adversity. A handoff to Watson. Tackled by Rasheed. And I like I like Rasheed. I like the way he moves in the middle. He can slide to the football. Number 11, watch him. This is what it's like to play. You move along, you're reading the play. All of a sudden, you see the block. Now you come up, attack, wrap those arms around him. Five tackles for him already. Rasheed, not the biggest of middle linebackers, but the coaches felt they really had to get him involved from sideline to sideline. They didn't want to make him a, a player that only used half the football field. Fumble on the field, and that appears that Alabama's come away with it. They have. Pinnock coughed it up. Oh, Talk about turnarounds in a football game. Turnovers will kill you, and that's exactly what's happening here for both sides. They're turning the football over. This is you get the yardage, you get down, you don't give it up. Right there's the hit. The ball looked as if it came out almost before the hit. Rashid was right there on top of it, number 11, and then Wayne Bacon steps up, Dave, and comes up with the recovery. What a turnaround. What great field position for Alabama. And look at Lou Holtz. You think he's not excited? He knows that you can't win when you make mistakes, and those are so critical. His watch on the option, tries to get the corner, and does so seven or eight yards on the carry. <laughs> Carolina miscues today. A couple of fumbles. The right. first fumble was on a kickoff return that ended up being a Alabama field goal. A couple of penalties as well. And Dave, I can tell you, if I'm Lou Holtz, what I'm going to turn around and say, I'm going to walk over to my defensive coordinator, Charlie, Charlie Strong, and I'm going to say, you make sure the quarterback pitches the football. We tackle him first. They've got to force him because of what? If he just keeps on turning up, it's going to be a long game. Galloway pounds it right into the middle of that defense, trying to pick up the yard and a half needed for the first down. We'll see if he did so. Boy, this is vintage Alabama controlling the football. Don't let South Carolina have it. Everything going their way. They made a couple mistakes. They were able to come up, come up with big plays to stop them, but I'm serious. They're, they are just taking the entire crowd out of this football game. Watch, fires, pass is caught by Millens. Millens inside the 10 to about the seven yard line. Goodman on the stop for South Carolina. Millens fired up. His team now first and goal. Or excuse me, he's about a yard shy of the first down. I think they may measure this. Don't want to jump the gun here. Dave, that option play has been very effective today, and it's interesting because they, Bama only ran the option one time against Vanderbilt. They ran it twice against Arkansas after they opened up against UCLA and just pounded UCLA with that option. They didn't use it for a couple of weeks, and now it's really effective today. Well, you know what's made it effective is that uh, Tyler Watts has been making yards with it, and what you do is you just keep on going until the defense stops it. Stay tuned. Coming up at halftime, we'll be highlighting the best in the SEC, presented by Don Pablos. It's all coming your way in five minutes and 45 seconds. Tyler Watts, first and goal from the eight. A couple of tight ends in the game. Jones and Sanders. Here's the option. Watts keeps it wide, scores a touchdown from eight yards out. The baby steps under Dennis Franchoni are turning into big leaps and bounds today. 
Look at the back of Watson's jersey. It's got all green on it. You don't see that often out of a quarterback. But he reads the block again. They're not making him pitch the football. So he just puts his head down and rumbles into the end zone. When you're, if you're not going to stop it, they're going to keep on going to it. Watts now 91 yards on the ground on 10 carries. He scores his first touchdown of the season. Neil Thomas trying to make this a 20 to 10 game. And he does so. Only the second time Alabama has scored a touchdown inside the red zone this year, but it was a big one. With 5.25 to go before halftime, Watts and company getting it done. Alabama leads it by 10. Five minutes, 25 seconds to go before halftime. The Tide move at 29 yards and four plays after the South Carolina fumble. Lane Beard will kick it off. Brewer and Watson back deep again. This time Brewer has it two yards deep. Brewer up to the 22-yard line. And miscues have been the name of the game today, Dave. What's been unbelievable. Alabama fumbles the football game to South Carolina. South Carolina fumbles it right back. And Alabama walks fumbles. He gets the football back. Then the interception by South Carolina. They come up with a big play, but they rough the punter. Another one that's just a killer. And then this last one, the fumble by Pinnock. That's what led to, to uh, Alabama's score. So it's been a game of just miscues. You know, that man not happy about it. Oh, holds. oh, I can tell you. Shotgun with five wide receivers. Watson drops it again. That's a good read by Petty coming out of there. What he does is he reads the backer coming right on him. He drops the football up there. You see Watson, he's going right out there. You see him on top of your screen on the right. He just drops the football. It's like he's taking his eyes off. Phil Petty now 7 of 12 for 74 yards. One touchdown. Had a couple of balls dropped today. Petty will move back in the shotgun. Move Watson to his left. Petty under pressure. Petty needs a block. Gets it and gets the corner. Petty picks up the first down, but a late flag comes in. That'll probably be a flip. It's all that coming. I wondered if that was on Gauss, number 19 on that block. He needed that block. You said he needed it, and he got it. I wonder if they, if they called I that said a block, clip. not clip. Yeah. Block. <laughs> yeah. He didn't block that clip. Yeah, right. Block. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what they may have called. Gauss is number 19. He's going to be on the left of your screen when Petty comes up. Good coming out of the pocket now. Pick up a couple blocks here. Gets one there. Yeah, there it is. During the offensive team, penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Still second down. Yeah, from where that flag was thrown, that was the block by Gauss, number 19. Now you say, what will help Carolina in this situation? Nothing will help them better than if they can move down the field and get a score. Even if it's a field goal. For Alabama, they go in charged up if they can stop them here and get the football back to their offense. Petty fires. Flags everywhere. Matthew Thomas, the intended receiver. Gerald Dixon. Might have got there a little bit early. Yeah. You talk about getting there early. He was in his pocket. Interference going to go against Alabama. Watch it again. You can't touch him before the football gets there. He's just going to come in this little seam. He's going to curl around. Pass interference by the defense. Goodness gracious. Penalty is awarded your first down. Follow the foul. Gerald, the guy that uh, played with a broken hand last year, sucked it up throughout the season. Boy, it's so tough for defensive backs. You're out there. You're, a, you're on an oasis. You're all by yourself. That is a tough position to play. That's the one I never wanted to play. There are four receivers in the game at this point. It's Petty flushed down the pocket. Pass incomplete. Short hops, Ryan Brewer. Pressure came from Cornelius Wortham, sophomore out of Calhoun City, Mississippi. 
when that time Petty wanted to go to Scott again. He saw him in the seam, but he just didn't have enough time. Now he's in the hurry up, trying to get a playoff, get it quick. Got a little bit of time left. Trying to catch Alabama before they can make changes on their defensive side personnel. Watson can't get out of the grasp of Brooks Daniels, the sophomore from Jasper, Florida. But what they say about Brooks Daniels, he's like a half linebacker, half defensive back. He only weighs about 200 pounds. But he's got great speed, and he's got that leverage, and he comes off the football, and he makes tackles in the backfield like that. They really like his play. They want him to put on about 18, 20 pounds. Get up that 220 range. Third and 11. Betty over the middle. Passes. Nearly picked off. It was right in the hands of Wayne Bacon. Number 24. I couldn't believe that Bacon missed this. You talk about an opportune time. He read it well. He's a strong safety. Left of your screen, dropping back. Watch him right here. He reads it, steps right in front. He's got it. I mean, it's right in his hands. And look at look at the reaction. You know when those defensive backs miss him, and you get up and you do that. Oh. Tyler Dean to punt it to Freddie Millens. Millens calls for a fair catch at the 31, and that's where Alabama will take over. No flags on that play. Alabama leads it by 10, just under four minutes to go before halftime. 39-yard punt by Dean. Well, here's the Alabama schedule. After this one, they will head back to the state of Alabama and take on UTEP at Legion Field. And then they'll go to Ole Miss. How about to South Carolina? The schedule a little bit more balanced than it's been in the past. They've, they've bunched up some really tough games, but they threw in the Wofford game, able to reschedule the Bowling Green game that was postponed or canceled due to the activity on September 11th. Watts picks up four or five yards. Just to give you an idea of the kind of half Tyler Watts is having, here are his total numbers so far. 213 yards. He's got 122 of those through the air. 91 rushing. He scored a touchdown on the ground, and he's thrown for a touchdown. That is a pretty impressive half. Well, and if you're a defensive and you don't make him pitch the ball and you don't make him pay for when he runs it, he's just getting bigger and bigger. He thinks he's like 240 pounds now. I'll run it. I don't. I have no, no fear. Is that pass caught? It is. Terry Jones, Jr. Looked like he might have kicked it to himself. It was a low pass around his feet. I thought the same thing. I thought it came off his foot. Golly. Terry Jones with his fifth catch of the season. It's thrown behind him. Watch him reach out. Left of your screen. See him running out of his picture right there? Now watch this. He gets right. Oh, he does make it. Whoa. Not as, not as picturesque as I thought it was, but uh, a good catch. It's a big catch for Terry Jones. Sure is. You know, he got hurt in this game a year ago and missed the remainder of the season. He's glad to be on the football field. And a five makes it first to ten. Hand off to Santonio Beard. That's another first down. And Dave, Alabama has two timeouts. They want to save them. Still 2.52. A lot of time left. But you want to think about those timeouts. Again, just fake handoff when you got everybody thinking about your quarterback, and that's just rumbling up through there. Golly. I've seen a lot of Santonio yeah. Beard today, and that's because Brandon Myrie has left the football team. So uh, Galloway, Hudson, and Beard are the tailbacks, and you see the total yards, 270 to 92. Wow. That's a blitz right now. Millens with the catch. That's a gain of about eight. Jonathan Martin on the stop for Carolina. Dave, anytime you have the speed of a Freddie Millens, you've got to respect that speed. And what uh, Tyler Watts is doing is he's just throwing a little hitch off and let him find a little seam. He can pick up seven, eight yards at a, at a play. You've got to come up and challenge him a little bit. If you're going to blitz, you've got to have confidence that you're going to get there and make him, make him throw quickly. So you've got to come up. Freddie came in here to this game with seven catches this season. He has five today. completes the pass. Alabama has it at about the 33. That goes to Antonio Carter. That'll be a tied first down. Kenny Harney and Edwards
combined for the stop. 145 to go before halftime. And when the when the chains move, the clock stops. So you get your call from the sideline. You run it in, get them in a huddle. Now the clock stops. You get right up on the football. Use that time. Boy, if Alabama can score here, can you imagine the emotion they will have going in the locker room? 136 and count. Three receivers to the right, one at the top of the screen. Set back is Galloway. Watts in the shotgun. Pass fired incomplete. Miscommunication. Might have been batted at the line of scrimmage by Edwards. Clock will stop at 123, and that'll bring up second down. Some scores from around the country. The SEC, Ole Miss leads the Wildcats 7-0 up in Lexington. Oklahoma by a couple of touchdowns. Northwestern by 10 in the second. And Nebraska leading in the second. Central Florida had an early 7-0 lead. And the Tar Heels trying to continue the mojo after beating Florida State last week. Lead by a point. Here's Watts. Pass is caught. Dillon gets six, five or six yards on the play. Neesmith pounds him out of bounds. And that is the sixth catch today for Freddie Millens. One off is total coming into this game. And let me tell you, between the combination between Watson and Millen, what happens is a quarterback, you get in a flow. Everything is going well. Your receiver's catching the football. Every time the ball's thrown out there, he's got those glue hands, and you just keep on going back to him and back to him and back to him. Third down and three. You know what I'd do? They haven't stopped that option all day long. I might run that option if I'm Tyler Watts. Tyler Watts will call a timeout. Play clock down to five. Crimson Tide will have one timeout remaining. Coach Fran looking back at his bench. Well, it's a long three yards, to be honest. There's a difference in long and short three yards. It's a long three yards. So they may feel that that may have been why he called timeout. All of a sudden, you look at it and you say, you know, that's a little bit longer than what I think it is. But they've got a lot of options. They've used Galloway up the middle, and he's been effective. They've used that toss. And then they got Freddie Millens out there, and he's gotten cushion every time. He's The defensive back that's covering him has just dropped off. He's thrown underneath. He's got a lot of options. Charles, the guy that uh, has been missing in this picture is Andrew Zhao as he watches Tyler Watts go to work here in the first half. Yeah, he's, he's been missing in action, but not because he doesn't want to play. Obviously, Andrew Zhao, who's been the, the starting quarterback for Alabama for most of his career, lost his job last year in a game that we did against Vanderbilt when Tyler Watts took over for him. When Watts was hurt, he came back. But this year, with Dennis Franchoni and his new staff, they let him battle it out. They selected Tyler Watts. And the way that Tyler Watts is playing, it's going to be very difficult for Andrew Zhao to get his job back. But he's handling it like a mature senior. No waves, no controversy there when they need him. Also, he's three for three when he's come into games with a touchdown pass against UCLA. So that's a mature kid. Coaches tell us that Tyler Watts just, the, the bottom line is Tyler just beats him out in practice. That's why he has the job. It's whoever gets it done will be the starting quarterback. And it's been Tyler Watts certainly today. Two tight ends. Millen's in motion. Pass caught by Millen's inside the 21st down Alabama. Sheldon Brown on the coverage. And Freddie Millen's is a factor today. I told you when a quarterback gets confident, he just knows he's, he knows he's going to catch everything. It's almost like you're in a zone. Runs his coverage off, makes that little turn. The pass is not a good pass. Again, look at this throw behind him, but look at those yeah. hands. That's what you want out of your wide receivers. You catch everything thrown your way. And you know what you do? Just keep on going to them. Here's the option. Watts dodges a tackle or two and gets it near the 10. Tripped up by Edwards. That's Edwards' fifth stop of the game. Clock ticking, 46-45. A lot of time here. They've got one timeout left. You don't want to waste it here in case you catch the ball in bounds. But you've got two or three shots to go to the end zone. Antonio Beard checks in. Watts now over 100 yards on the ground. Here's Beard. He'll pick up the first down near the five. Kenny Harney on the stop for Carolina. And now he picked their cognizant of picking up that first down. Boy, good hits. 
Ooh. <laughs> That's what it sounds like down there. When they were conscious of picking up that first down, that stops the clock. Now the clock starts running. Interesting. They're, they're changing players with under 10, 20 seconds. They're taking a lot of time here. I can't There's 10 this. seconds on the clock and counting. This may be the last play oh, of the first no. half. Oh, and he had to call a timeout. Oh, boy. Wow. That's not very good clock management. That play started with about 23 seconds. You waste 18 seconds and then end up calling a timeout. That is not good. So now, Dave, you, you got to kick the field goal, I would guess, yeah. with five seconds. You missed an opportunity to go at the end zone. Charles. Question for you guys. Do you think that Tyler Watts thought that they were going to start the clock on snap there instead of instead of chopping play in, you know chopping time in seemed like he was confused because he was taking all the time in the world yeah. to go up to the line of scrimmage looking over the defense getting ready to make a call and i think also charles that it happened from the sideline as well alabama ran three players yeah. on yeah, yeah it, it's unbelievable because i really thought that they knew that the clock would start when it was supposed to it didn't happen they're changing personnel a mistake by both sides whether tyler watts or the bench that was very difficult and you know at the half guys we're gonna have scores stats highlights we're gonna take a look at a game that, of, of last year a big time game that happened right here on this field i think we might have been there i think we were <laughs> i know we were by the way 80 get the exact number here 84,100, second largest crowd in the history of williams bryce stadium on hand today as neil thomas will attempt a 24 yard field goal He's connected from 19 and 28 already today. Snap is good. Kick is up and good. So Neil Thomas, three for three today. He had four field goals against Vanderbilt. And Alabama ends the first half with a flourish. 23 to 10 is our first half score. The Crimson Tide faithful loving it. On the road in the Southeastern Conference as we have hit halftime. Clearly, we haven't found out whether we can move the ball yet or not. When we had to win, we only had three plays, but hopefully this will be a different half. All right, thank you, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Coach Holtz seemed pretty in control. He's been in, he's been in positions like this before. Oh, yeah. He's seen his team rally. We saw it here last year against Mississippi State. They rallied from the depths of despair to come back, but this Alabama team looks real focused. Loose football again. Who's got it? Don't tell me, Alabama. They're all signaling. Look at them. This has been unbelievable. You ever see 84,000 people hold their breath? Antoine Neesmith caught the ball and dropped it. It's recovered by South Carolina. Gosh, ah, so you talk about oh, 80. He, he oh, got huh? hammered. Yes, he did. Look at that. Now Alabama actually got on the ball. You know what? I think South Carolina wrestled the ball away from him. Remember that player was? I think he just wrestled away. Because watch Alabama oh, coming here. Marvin Brown laid the hit on D. Smith, number six. Brown lost his starting spot this week. Fumbled a couple of times last week to Brown. Not Loud took over the fullback spot. Here's Petty under pressure. Finds Brewer. It's the ground. Gonna bring up second down. Derek Watson, in case you're wondering, four carries, 10 yards. Phil Petty, if you're wondering, 7 of 15, 74 yards, one TD. Andrew Pinnock, three carries, eight yards. Watson has dropped a couple of balls as well out of the backfield. Yeah, they, they, this has just been a disaster for them first half. And what you do, you go in the locker room, you, you yell and scream and do a little bit of that to start with. Then you get back and say, okay, this is what we've done right. Because you don't have a whole halftime to yell at players. Watson stays in the block. Betty goes deep. Pass is caught at the 35 by Matthew Thomas, the freshman. Takes it down to the 21 where he's run out of bounds. Miles on the coverage, and Phil Betty, not known for his strong arm, just laid it up there, and the true freshman from Pearson, Georgia, comes up with the catch. This is just one-on-one. -on -one. Who wants it to work the best? Look at this. 
I don't know, it was almost a one-arm catch when he brought that football down inside there. Thomas just times it perfect. Coming down the sideline now. Look, just going to play the ball. Sees it. Look at that one arm. That's one arm going up after that football. A gain of 58. Charles. We talked with Skip Holtz yesterday, and he kept saying, if we ever get that one guy who can stretch a defense, a guy who can go deep and make a play and actually catch the ball, should look like on that play that Matthew Thomas wants to make move, wants to make a move in that direction. Yeah, Lou Holtz told us somebody on that receiving core has to step up. They were going to try to get guys like Willis Ham, Hornkoff, Andre Goss, and Matthew Thomas. Thomas has been the one that came up with the big play today, 58-yarder. Naughton McKay Lozier, sophomore from Toronto, is the player that was banged up. That's why we had the stoppage of play. He gets over to that bench with under his own power. We'll get an update on his status. Dave, let me tell you how much that helps an offense. Oh, oh, you just can't believe the pressure that takes off your back. If they can take it in here and score, they're back in this football game. Patty pump fakes, goes to the corner of the end zone. Chavez Donix, the junior out of Tallahassee. Just ran out of bounds. I think Petty just had a little much on it. Might have got a little excited. Well, he did because he watched the play fake. He just play fakes and then just finds him. Look at this. He's got to concentrate on keeping those feet. He was about a yard out of bounds. he got to stay in bounds. Right on it. Right there. You see that left foot's down? Clearly out of bounds. Boy, South Carolina has used nine receivers today. They're trying to find somebody, anybody, to come up with a big play. There's four of them in the game right now. Petty, quick throw. Pass is caught by Thomas. He's about a yard and a half shy of the first down. Dixon on the coverage. Boy, and Thomas is pumped. Look at him. He's getting a chance. He's saying, hey, throw me the ball. <laughs> you know, I've got the same number as Freddie Millett. Throw me. 15 is doing pretty good on the outside of the field. Throw it to me. Boy, quarterbacks love when their when their receivers get in that flow. Carl Torbush, the defensive coordinator for Alabama, the former North Carolina head coach on the right. Figured out a way to stop South Carolina on this drive. Been pretty good at it so far today. That's a tee backfield. I see that very often. Watson trying to get the corner. First down. Inside the 10. That'll set up first and goal. Charles Jones on the stop, number 20. That play would not have worked had Ryan Brewer not getting his block. He blocks Daniels on the outside. If he doesn't get that block right there, he's not going to make the play. Heads up play there. Just keep on running to the corner. But how long, how long has it been since you've seen a full team backfield? Two halfbacks and a fullback. Been a while. Yes, it has. Since Pop Warner. Absolutely. <laughs> Now, Petty doing a lot of audibles. See him, he's calling audibles on the line, reading what the defense is going to give him. Oh, free play, free play. Brewer. Brewer, touchdown, South Carolina, if it holds up. Jared Johnson might have jumped off sides. We'll wait and see. That could be a huge, huge touchdown, and it is. I don't know how Larrell Johnson, number 73, got the snap off. Right in his face, pops the center. Look at Brewer. He's not going to be, he's not going to be denied. He'll just pull him in the end zone. Heads up play. It's a free play. You've got to read that if you're a quarterback. You've got to look downfield and say, hey, I can take a chance. by the defense. That foul is declined. Touchdown score. So Ryan Brewer, who had the huge game at the outback ball, comes up with a... Big, big play. Boy, that is exactly what South Carolina needed. Point after. is up and good by Daniel Weaver. And it's 23 to 17. Ryan Brewer's done this a couple of times in his career at South Carolina, but perhaps none bigger. Back in a moment. Phil Petty leads his team on an opening second half drive for a touchdown. South Carolina nearly fumbled the kickoff. 58-yard play from Petty to Thomas. Gave the Gamecocks a chance to put it in the end zone, which they did behind Ryan Brewer. Joey Bowers kicks it off and is deep into the 
the end zone. Alabama will take a knee, and it will come out to the 20-yard line. Let's take you back in time, because Ryan Brewer, last year in the Outback Bowl, put on one of the classic performances you will see. The tailback was the state of Ohio's Mr. Football. He had a career day against the Buckeyes. The Troy, Ohio native was named MVP of the bowl game after totaling 214 all-purpose yards, 109 rushing, 92 receiving, 13 in punt returns, and three TDs as South Carolina won 24-7 in their second-ever bowl win. And now let's see if the defense, who has been on the field all day, can come up to the occasion. There's the option. Watts' number in the first numbers, because there are plenty of them yeah. in the first half, were quite impressive. He had 106 yards rushing, 15 of 19 for a buck 50 through the air, has a TD and one interception. I mean, yeah. <laughs> this is as well as he has played since he stepped oh. foot on the Alabama camp. I think Coach Fran said it best. We played the best half of football, not only this year, probably comparing last year too, bringing that into it. But Dave, I think they can't continue to give South Carolina momentum. They need a couple first downs. McCadley with the reception out over the 30. That'll be a first down. And that's what Alabama, you got to assume, wants to do. Because this crowd can be yeah. devastating if they're allowed to get into the game. Well, when you're the visiting team, what you want to do is you want to move those chains. And that's exactly what Alabama did. A little, you know, very conservative. You've got 84,000 people here screaming. They think this is the first time that they're going to beat Alabama coming into this football game. So you take the momentum away by just moving those chains and just don't allow that enthusiasm to build. Last year, they were getting hammered at halftime with South Carolina. They came back, made a game of it, scored 17 points, which was the most they ever scored against Alabama. That's what they have right now. Well, one thing in talking yesterday to South Carolina coaches, they, they talked about third down being their big down, but I disagree a little bit. First down's the big down. If you can't get in that second and five you've got to get him second and eight or nine charlie strong can tell you that because that brings up third down and you want third down and six seven somewhere in there you're all right where you can kind of dictate that it will exactly. be a passing play well second down and eight david charlie strong's got him in the spot right now shotgun formation four wide receivers galloway the setback and it is to Galloway. Galloway over the 35. Quinn on the stop for Carolina. That'll bring up third down and, well, about four. Yeah, and that was an interesting play. What they did with Galloway is they brought him in a misdirection. He came over, got the ball, and then sliced back. They're trying to get the linebackers, like Edwards, to overplay the ball and then cut back against the grain. Well, Alabama ran 50 plays last week in their win against Arkansas offensively. They, this will be their 54th play of the game here today, offensively speaking. Laycock, down to one. Watts, scramble, first down and more. Tyler Watts inside the 40, down to the Carolina 36. That is pure Tyler Watts. Let me tell you what he did. He went to throw the ball. The coverage was right there. They had taken it away on the outside. Watch this. This is pass all the way. See the way the linemen are sitting? Now, he gets that pressure from the backside, and he just scrambles for the first down. That is pure, just a great decision by your quarterback. And it's Franchoni. Says Tyler Watts is making good decisions this year, and I guess so, after the gain of 25. in motion. Handoff goes to Beard. He breaks a tackle. Picks up five or six yards on the carry. Dave, one of the big matchups that I was looking at in this football game was the two freshmen that sit on the left side of the line, Smiley and Britt. And they've played well. They're coming off the ball strong. They're giving good pass protection. They're controlling Quinn, getting a push on the Langston Moore in the middle. So they're playing well. You don't see many freshmen play at Alabama. Look at those rushing wow. yards. 174 yard advantage for Alabama. Watts chased, dived 
to about the 30. And they spotted at the 29. I was kind of blinded by the South Carolina bench. Lou thought he ran out of bounds at about the 31. Yeah, Lou threw his hat. He says, let me show you where the ball is. I think he might have thrown his headset, too. Watch Lou in the right of your screen right here. The official comes up here. Look, he's saying, way back there. Look, right there. That's where he was. Right there. He's going to throw his wallet out in a minute. I'll go down there and pick that up. 31. I wouldn't be surprised to see South Carolina blitz on this. They had a lot of effect. Here they come. Beard with the carry, and I think that'll be enough for the first down. Well, that's going to be close. They ran a run blitz, and what you do there is you get a lot of penetration. You try to stop them in the backfield. See all those, all those red jerseys coming up there? you got to get penetration. You can't let them fall forward. It's going to be close. You know, this defense has been on the football field a while, and, and oh. when you talk to Charlie Strong, he's liked the way his defense has played this year. They've given up some yards, but not the big play, but his only concern was they didn't have a whole lot of depth defensive defensively speaking and, up, and this this defense has been on the field for so long Dave I've got to believe that's going to start to take effect from this point on oh I can promise you it does because you never get a chance when your offense goes three and out you come over you sit down I mean you start to get a drink of water and all of a sudden it's third down and seven your offense doesn't make it you've got to stand up get your call and get ready to go back in there you never get a chance to get your breath who would have thought that we would have 40 points on the board at this point crazy what pump fakes has his man, is that Millett? Yes it is, Freddie Millett out of bounds inside the five. Well, you remember the old play, out and up? That's exactly what this is. Excellent fake by Tyler Watts right here. Watch the head fake, bang, throws the arm now. Look back, Millett has got the speed. And Millett, look at this, right there, he freezes the corner, now he's got him. And good concentration. Quarterback running right up there, he just catches it right over top of his shoulder. Freddie Millens. What a day he's had. Eight catches. Down to the three goes Galloway. When you start this situation, Dave, you start looking at what ifs. South Carolina needs to hold them to a field goal. Alabama cannot settle for another field goal. They have got to push the football in. Tyler Watts. Just Tyler Watts. That's because the option's running well. He's passing the ball. He's got Freddie Millens. That's, a, that's an arsenal right there. Just had Freddie Millens. Now in motion to the far side. Here's the option. Galloway. He can walk it into the end zone. Touchdown. Crimson Tide. Another impressive drive. Well, that's exactly what you do. If you're a team and you've had a play go against your defense, what do you do? You don't come out and give it up in three. You run the option. Great pitch right here. Galloway just puts us down and, like you said, just runs into the end zone. Good block downfield here. Donnie Lau, 49, yeah. steps up. Nice block. And gives Galloway the extra yard to get in there. And so Alabama will go for two. Who do you go to? Oh, why not Millens? Oh, they can't go to Millens again. Millens in motion. Pass underthrown. Pressure came from Faison, and the conversion is no good, but Alabama, they answer the South Carolina touchdown with six of their own. They lead it by 12. We'll see what the Gamecocks can do when we come back. We are back in Columbia, South Carolina. The Crimson Tide march it down the field. Their lead is 12, 8.39 to go in the third quarter. South Carolina opened up the second half, marching it down the field for the touchdown. Alabama responds. Eric Watson, Ryan Brewer back to return the kick. This will go to Watson. Derek trying to find a seam. Takes it out over the 25. South Carolina will take over from there. This has been a game of time possession. I think it's reflected in the scoreboard, Dave. I mean, it is unbelievable. I can't tell you what I've ever seen it worse than that. They've run 27 plays in nine minutes. That, that is just incredible. 27 plays. 
to your opponent. Now, that's not bad if it's early in the game, but when your opponent has run 60 plays, it's unbelievable. Last week, remember, 50 offensive plays for Alabama in the whole game. Here's Derek Watson. He's got a lot of green grass in front of him and a blocker. Out over the 15 to the 47, Wayne Bacon did a nice job staying with the play, avoided the block, and kept that from being six. <laughs> and Watson almost said, get out of my way. Watch this, they got a blitz on. They catch the blitz, little screen pass underneath. Now watch Watson out here. Get out of my way. Run, big guy, run. <laughs> That's Rivers. Just get out of my way. C.J. Fry up there and working his rear end off the son of the track and field coach here at USC. We need a little bit more track and field on that. Watson. Boyd's one tackle, picks up eight on the play. The ball I want to give some credit, that was C.J. downfield. I thought that was Rivers downfield, but that was 58, not 78. C.J. Uh, Irmo, South Carolina. His father, this track team here in South Carolina that his father coaches is one of the premier track teams in the entire country. Numerous Olympians and All-Americans. There's Pennick. He picks up the first down. I want to tell you, this is the first I've seen South Carolina really perform their game plan. I know they completed that long one, but this is the first I've seen them go to the run, do what they've done best. It's almost like Phil Petty's taken a little bit of a, a deep breath and said, hey, we're going to go back to what we do well. That's what you need your quarterback to do. He needs to step in that huddle and say, hey, listen, everything's gone wrong, but we're still in control of this game. Dave, we haven't seen Corey Jenkins yet. Backup quarterback who came on against Mississippi State and had a strong showing. Petty pump fakes going for the end zone, just out of the reach of his receiver. That was a tough throw and catch. Matthew Thomas was the intended receiver on the far side. The pump fake. Uh, we've seen a lot of them, haven't we? The pump fake and the fumble. Exactly. <laughs> little pump fake there. You just try it again. That out and up. This is right off the fingertips. That's where you want the ball thrown. You don't want it under thrown. And that quarterback relationship with a wide receiver, that'll get a lot better as Matthew Thomas gets a little bit more reps and plays. Oh, it could be a free play. Petty pump fakes and goes the other way. Needs a block. He's chased out of bounds. Aries Monroe probably is the guilty party jumping across the line of scrimmage. And you know what's funny? I thought I saw Petty get up and limp a little bit. When he ran out of bounds, I wonder if he stumbled a little bit. He looked like he limped just a little bit. He went over and there you see him against with the referee. But he got up and kind of took like a funny little step. Dave, of course, one. Oh, that's a, that's an interesting call. Goes against goes against the offense. But the I think what he's what he's what happened to Phil Petty is he ran out of bounds. He's running from grass onto an astroturf surface. So maybe yeah, that was what the foul. short step was. Offsides by the defense. Illegal motion by the offense. We'll replay the second down. Here's our Pizza Hut scoreboard. Ole Miss up by a touchdown at halftime. Oklahoma starting to turn it on against Kansas State. Three-point game. Virginia Tech over Central Florida. And North Carolina trying to win their second straight in the ACC. So second down and 10. Betty flushed out. Has all day. Has a receiver on the near side. Throws it out of bounds. Oh, Donnings was the intended receiver. He was open early in the route. Well, that's where Phil Petty's got to throw the ball back in bounds. Bring your receiver back into the field of play. As he rolls out there, he doesn't give his receiver a chance. He floats the ball. His receiver goes out of bounds. But you bring your receiver back in because his receiver was behind the defender. Too much hard work. Big down here, they've got to pick up first down. They don't want to give up this series, get the football back to Alabama with the momentum they have. Pressure coming. Patty gets hit as he throws it over the middle. Oh, Murphy! Incomplete! Oh! oh. 
the back judge came running in like he was going to mark the ball. But the field judge ruled it was an incomplete pass to Andre Goss. I thought, I thought the exact same thing that you called. Quarterback pressure that time. Wortham just coming right down the quarterback's throat right there. And he just laid that ball out. I thought, as you said, I thought the official was coming in to mark the spot, Dave. He said it bounced. Look at this. Wow. Yeah, that definitely hit. That definitely hit. See, the official comes in to mark the spot right there. I thought, I thought that was a reception. Here it is, fourth down and ten. That Carolina is 0 for 3 this year. From the backside, Penny goes down. Not McHale Osher with the big sack. And Alabama will get the football. Can't take this much time. When you step up in that pocket, you've got that much time. You have got to run the football. You can't allow those defensive backs to come all the way around, those defensive linemen to come all the way around their block. But how about that young man? McKay Lozier left the game with dehydration a little while ago. So you've got to run for that. He only had to make 10 yards. So you've got to run for that. Lozier went all the way around the back of the tackle and then came back to make the make play. Too long. Alabama first and 10. Handoff. Goes to Galloway, who has a couple of rushing touchdowns today. And by the way, on the last touchdown run by Ahmad Galloway, which was a three-yard touchdown run. He went over 1,000 yards in his career. He has 1,001 yards for Ahmad Galloway in his career at Alabama. Let's check in with Charles. Yeah, pretty good career, and he's getting a lot of help from his wide receivers who are blocking very well downfield. Remember the last out and up to Freddie Billings? It was set up because they keep chopping the defensive backs down. Hard to pick yourself up off the ground so much if Bill is still going to coverage. Tiring. Good point, Charles. Here's Tyler Watts. Football. Recovered by Jason McCadley. That's his second fumble recovery today. Keep in mind, Alabama has put the ball on the turf now six times today. They've only lost one. That's a, that's a huge stat. Six times they fumbled. One time they've turned it over. Again, just trying to get that extra yard. Look at the Alabama. Look how opportunistic they are. Right there, the ball just bounces their way. Lou Holtz is over there saying, why don't they bounce our way once in a while? Millen's in motion. <laughs> go right back to there. Another pump fake. But Cadley gets whacked as he made the catch at the 32-yard line. Passes complete first down Crimson Tide. Is that Fran Tarkenton down there we're looking at? <laughs> Tyler Watts, he's running like Fran. Huh? Well, I chased Fran Tarkington enough, but everything that Watts is throwing up is being caught. He's got Millen out in the flat. He's he's uh, just attracting the coverage. He finds McAdley downfield. Everything he's thrown has been completed. 18-yard pickup. 25 first downs for Alabama. One fumble to football. Picked up by South Carolina. Rashad pays on with a huge play, and that's exactly what the Gamecocks needed to get it back into the game. George Goss forced the fumble, and Faison picked up and returned into Alabama territory. Well, this is what you do. You tackle the quarterback. You make him pitch it early. If they didn't learn anything at halftime, South Carolina said, hey, they're not going to run that option and allow Phil Petty, to, I mean, excuse me, Tyler Watts to turn up field. And here's Corey Jenkins making his first appearance of the game. The junior college transfer, the former professional baseball player. Derek Watson in the backfield with Jenkins. A little option to Watson. And Alabama read it perfectly. A loss of about a yard. Well, you got to run that option a little bit deeper into the, into the field. When you run into that short field, you've got to turn it up a little bit deeper before you pitch. But Corey Jenkins has waited a long time for his chance. Two-time junior college All-American. Bill Petty expected this. The coaches felt it was a good changeup. 
last week, and they really wanted to do it against Georgia, but didn't really pull the trigger when they thought they should have. Jenkins, it's about seven. Victor Ellis on the stop. First round draft pick by the Red Sox in 95. It's been four years playing pro baseball before returning to college football. Good read there by, good read by Jenkins. Running along, following this block, getting up in the field, getting as many yards as he can. See if he doesn't come right back and try it again. Talented young man. Clock's ticking down. He better hurry up a little bit. He's just taking his time. Carolina, two of six on third down conversions today. Jenkins has a block or two and picks up the first down. Fake to Watson, and then he keeps it off tackle. And that's, an exact, that's the exact same play that Alabama has used so well. Fake to the halfback coming across. Watch this. Fake to Watson right there. Now pull it back out and follow your guard. Just run right up through the hole. That's Wharton, 68. He's a big person to follow. Eight of nine, first and ten. On that drive against Mississippi State, when he let him down the field for the field goal, you see they ran 16 plays. Jenkins carried it 11 times for 75 yards. They say he's got a great arm. He's just not accurate in the game. He throws that up for grabs, and it goes out of bounds. Boy, he's lucky he didn't get wow. grounded. Daniel Brooks coming in. Excuse me, I should say Brooks coming in there, getting that great pressure in there. Pulls him down. When you get your hand on him, you can't let go of him. Brooks Daniels just comes up there, gets that hand in the back, and whoo! <laughs> Talk about strength. Yeah. You better believe it, but he's really fortunate he didn't get thrown, just throwing the ball downfield. Bill Petty comes back into the game on second down and 10. Jenkins moves the chains a couple of times and turns it over to the senior, Petty. Pass is caught near side. That goes to Matthew Thomas. And I'll tell you this. I, I think that we have seen the emergence of Matthew Thomas, number 15, who played well. Well, college football fans, visit Huddle House and play our fantastic football game where every scratch and match card has a winning combination. Thousands of prizes will be awarded, including a new Dodge Ram quad cap truck. Come on in and try your luck. Yeah, how about the quarterback pressure last year, Dave? 20 yeah. pressures on South Carolina quarterbacks. Petty didn't play in the first half because of a bad ankle, but came on in the second half. Today they put some pressure on Petty as well. Bringing the blitz. Petty lost it up in front of the end zone. Looking for Thomas. Flag down. Thomas got bumped out of bounds by Dixon. That's a good call. He forces him out of bounds. Pushes him out of bounds. Again, you got that right to go downfield. You can't push him out of bounds. You see there the contact. He almost came back and made that. That was awfully close. Again, coming off the line one on one. You're trying to get that. You see him push him right out there. Out of the defense. The penalty is the ball being awarded to follow the foul, followed by first down. All right, first down Gamecocks. Charles, what do you have? Yeah, Gerald Dixon was trying to do the right thing, pushing him out of bounds. That wasn't the issue. The issue was that he had his hands on him when the ball was in the air. That's the call. And Thomas, just the true freshman, really kept his concentration and almost came back around to make the play. Look at the penalties for Alabama. Again, seventh today. A couple of tight ends. First and ten. Little play action. Oh, Ryan Brewer was standing at the goal line. Petty nods his head and says, yeah, I missed it. That was going for Rod Trafford to tie it in. But Brewer was standing there, and Petty acknowledged it when the play was over. Watch Brewer, number 21, right there, wave a little bit. And you can see him, he's going, oh, no, I was <laughs> wide open. What a, just a great story of what you call the blue-collar worker. Just does everything you ask him to do. Second and goal. That key formation again. The option Petty down to the one yard line. Boy, with Brewer, Watson, and Pinnock back there. 
That's tough to figure out who, who, who the option will be to. Well, you know, I almost thought that Bruce should have gotten the toss that time. He was the trail on the play, but I think what happened is that Petty just said, hey, we're not going to try it. You know what I do in this situation? Come right back again. Try to go right back with that quarterback option. You're not going to ball him off the line up front. Alabama's too strong. you got to go on the edges. That's, I think it's a two-down situation here at the one-yard line. Third and goal from the one. Pennick stops shy. He wasn't stopped much shy. Andrew Pinnock has 13 career touchdowns, three this year. This is the one where you want to pull it out. Because look right there, they, they guessed, Alabama guessed, they guessed right. But look if, if uh, Petty had pulled that football out. He had to toss and he had to run. Don't even look, Lou, just oh, walk away. Boy. Fourth down conversions this year. They're 0 for 4 today, 0 for 1. Fourth and goal from the 1. I think I play in the line. Go wide. Andrew Pinnock, touchdown Carolina, his fourth of the season. I was afraid to go up the middle, but not Lou Holtz. You're going to give it to somebody. Who's going to stop Andrew Pinnock? 5'11", 250 pounds, and he's got a run and start. You're not going to stop. Look, he got hit in the backfield, and he just kept those legs going. Look where he gets hit. Right there, he's hit. Does he go down? No. He's got great leg strength to get in the end zone that surge. Well, he ran over Gerald Dixon, one of the guys that he met with. Point after is up and good. Dixon goes 185 pounds. Pinnock goes 250. Andrew Pinnock with his fourth touchdown of the season. Carolina fighting and clawing. Back after a word from your local station. Well, the 84,200, at least most of them anyway, back in the game as this is a five-point contest. Bama has dominated, it appears, but South Carolina, like they have done for the past year and a half, find a way to stay in the game. It's not pretty. No, no, it's anything. <laughs> it's ugly. <laughs> Freddie Millen's on the return. Stood up at the 20, a flag down at the 33-yard line. Ryan Elam, the backup corner, makes the stop on Millens. Brooks Daniel may have, been, may have been hurt on that play. He's the one that's limping off. Ooh. Well, get the calls back, and this year is your chance to win every weekend with Ice House. Saturday during the game, a few lucky consumers will get a winning phone call, and one of those winners will get to see their favorite team play all season long. It could be you. See participating Ice House displays or visit icehouse.com to register your phone number. Ice House, official beer of JP Sports Broadcast, would like to congratulate Sue Ellen Garlington from Macon, Georgia. Last week's Get the Call Grand Prize winner. No purchase necessary. Open to U.S. residents who are 21 and older. See displays for official rules. Sweepstakes ends November 20th, 2001. The Crimson Tide backed up to the 10. Preston Thorne, first one in, flag down, could be delay of game. Boy, this is where that crowd comes into effect. That's a dead ball, delay of game, you're right, Dave. But the crowd making a lot of noise, they're getting in, they're standing up. All of a sudden, they realize they've got a chance to get back in this football game. You know, the longer Tyler Watts waited to, to call the play, the wow. wow. this crowd got. Look at him in that end zone. Alabama now eight penalties today. Oh, he's trying to call an audible. Edwards on the stop. Galloway gets a couple. Preston Thorne also in there. Thorne got a lot of snaps in there. 
for 94, the nose. He and uh, Edwards in there on that stop. Big stop. They've got to stop him here. If they stop him here, they're going to get great field position. This could be the turning point of this football game. I know there's a lot of time left. Couple of tight ends on second and 11. Watt, pump fakes, keeps it. Watt gets dumped a couple of times and around the 14. Guess what? Preston Thorne back in there again, along with Willie Offer. Gosh, Thorne, just the freshman, getting a lot of playing time, number 94 in the middle. Boy, he's built like he's built like a nose tackle. Six foot, 274, get that freshman. Stocky moves around in there. Give me a chance, coach. Freshman out of Somerville, South Carolina. Alabama will use a timeout on third and seven. Timeout, Alabama. The first of the second half. Looks as though a flag is down, however, David, the 30. Maybe they got the timeout before the delay of game, which is apparently what is happening. Charles, it's been a relatively quiet crowd for the second largest in school history, but I'm guessing down there on the sidelines, was, was it getting a little bit loud? Huh? Did you say something, Dave? Oh, yeah, you're right. It has gotten awfully loud down here. What's happened is at halftime, the team was down 23 to 10, as you remember, and then they had a great halftime ceremony, big on patriotism, but somewhat somber. That depressed the crowd a little bit further. But when they started the second half and South Carolina scored, started to bring them back into it, and of course, the last touchdown now this defensive stand has the students back up off their hands and on their feet well this has been uh just a classic sec football game welcome to the southeastern conference dennis franchoni I'm sure he's enjoying this one you know one of the big reasons i think alabama's offense has been successful at least the option is because freddie millens has become a factor today Look what he did in 1999 as a sophomore with 65 receptions. Had a great campaign. 2000, very disappointing. It's been well documented about his trials and errors. Coming into this game, he was averaging 25 a, care, a catch, 25 yards a catch, but he only had seven receptions. Today, he has eight catches, 72 yards. Because of him and his ability, that has created opportunities for Tyler Watts and Ahmad Galloway today. I can promise you they'll look to him. When they get in trouble, they're going to look to him. They bring him in motion, so he's got that one-on-one. -on -one. If they go decide to run the football, get out of the way, official. Oh! Ahmad Galloway breaks out of the pack to the 37-yard line. He was going to be stopped shy of the first down. Island finally brings him down. Did you see the referee get this play? I wondered if that's what kept South Carolina from tackling. Right here, look at the official. He gets, he takes out a couple. That's a pretty good block by the by the official. But how about Galloway? Bumps into him. Watch this. Bumps into him right here. You're gonna see him get in there. Now look at that. They're trying to tackle him. He might have been tackled right there. Was that offered? He came up to the 20. Wally Howe, the umpire there in the middle, got caught up in the fray. He seems to be all right. Five-point Alabama lead. Back after word from Texas Pete. 29-24. The Crimson Tide lead the Gamecocks by five in what has been a wacky, wacky game. Tyler Watts has been the story for Alabama with 353 total yards in this one. Alabama has racked up 451 yards of total offense, which is their second best total. He's seven yards shy of the UCLA total. Watts has to spin around. Watts hit from behind. Loose football recovered by Clarico Portis, the junior from Pritchard, Alabama. A flag down at the 33. Jonathan Martin is the Gamecock who worked his way back around to hit Watts and forced the fumble. I wondered if there was a, yeah, there was a face mask on Watts when he got tackled. Oh, when it rains, it pours for Lou Holtz and his staff. Pressure from the backside. Watch the face mask, see if the hand doesn't go up. Oh, that was golly, you know, from a defensive standpoint. I mean, that just barely was a five yard face mask. From the previous spot, as opposed to from the spot of the foul, yeah. which is a difference because Watts would have lost about eight yards on the play. 
So that'll bring up first and five. Fourth quarter unfolds in front of Lou Holtz's eyes. Good down to try to hit something here. Hand off to Galloway. And I think he might have hopped real close to that first down. Edwards on the stop. Kalimba now with seven tackles today. That is a first down for Avant Galloway in the Crimson Tide. And they have now gone over 460 yards of offense. They had 458 versus UCLA in that 20 to 17 loss to open the season. And Galloway just keeps on chewing up the yards. Here's Galloway. Nowhere to run. Gets a couple out of nothing. And Edwards once again steps up in the middle to make the stop. Well, one thing that South Carolina has got to do is they've got to shed blocks. You can't allow a running back to run up in the line. You've got to be off your blocks. You've got to get rid of them. You can't be locked up right there. As you see Langston Moore tied up in there, you can't be that. You've got to get rid of those blocks and get penetration. Is that Portis down? Yeah, it appears that Marika Portis is at the midfield stripe. 6'3", 300-pounder. Portis is a big, strong football machine. He set an offensive line record in the offseason by bench pressing 550 pounds. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh, I don't know. We didn't have that much weight in my weight room. <laughs> you know what? When a big man goes down like that, that's tough. It's good to see him back up on his feet, walking, limping a little bit, but uh, good to see him back up. Well, here's a look at the stats through the three quarters of play brought to you by Choice Hotels International. 250 yards on the ground about for Alabama. Of course, Petty's got, what, 184 of those yards? A couple of TDs. For Phil Petty. It's been a it's been a weird game. Yeah. I mean, we thought oh. defense, 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 and what, what we're getting here is uh, closing in on uh, 700 yards of offense. There's Phil Petty waiting for his chance. Corey Jenkins took some snaps in the last series for South Carolina, but as has been the case most of the day, it seems like Alabama's offense has been out there a long, long time. It's Antonio Beard. Picks up a couple. That'll bring up third down and five. Edwards on the stop again. Well, it's good line play because what they're doing is they're tying them up. You'll see everybody get locked up on blocks. And then you just allow your running back just to kind of slide through and find a hole. That's the best way offensive linemen love the block. They love to lock you up. Big man on big man. Third and five. The last time, Ahmad Galloway busted it for a 25-yard game. See what he does here. Oh, a lot of time. Watts taken down at the 49. Well, the crowd certainly appreciates the defensive sack, but it's a sack by the secondary because secondary just took it. They just took away the receiver. Look at the amount of time. You're talking about 2.5 seconds. Now all of a sudden he just realizes he's got he's got to get out of that pocket and it collapses around him. But great coverage from the secondary. Alabama's first punt of the day. The Lane Beard punted earlier, but he got a roughing penalty, which gave Alabama a first down. Brewer makes the fair catch at the 16. So South Carolina's defense holds tough when they have to. We've got 12 and a half minutes to go in a five-point SEC contest. Alabama leads it by five, 29-24. We've got 12 and a half to go here in the fourth quarter. Let's go down to Charles and see what he has about uh, Arico Portis. And the big man has an injured left ankle, but they've spatted it up. They've taped over the shoe, and they expect him to go back in, Dave. They'll need him back in there. A couple of tight ends. Two wide receivers. The back is Watson. He's been quiet today. Petty saying to his top receiver, you got to move off the line of scrimmage. And off to Watson. Gains a yard. Lou Holtz. This team continues to hang around. Down five. But this is his third year 
in Columbia. They are undefeated to this point, but look at what he did at Notre Dame in his third year. Now, obviously different circumstances, but not that much. He went 12-0 with a national championship in 1988. Hmm. Hmm. Work to be done here, however, as Petty has to hit Brewer, try to find Ryan Brewer on the far side. Pressure came from Todd Bates, the true freshman out of Heflin, Alabama. When if Bates doesn't get pressure on there, they had a screenplay set up this side that was going to be a break big. But you remember that old adage, just hang around, hang around, hang around, in the fourth quarter you look up and you say, hey, we're only down five points? That's what South Carolina has got to be saying. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong today for them, but they're still in this football game. Eric Watson just eight carries, 22 yards today. Third down and nine. Petty has some time. He steps up in the pocket. Nowhere to go. The coverage was absolutely outstanding. Kendall Moorhead brings Petty down at about the 18-yard line. Boy, everybody is covered. Watch this. This is all 22 players. As they drop back, you're going to see one-on-one -on -one coverage out here. That's just incredible. They're just locked in them. Right in there. Look, nobody's open. You see everybody's got men around them. There's no place for him to look downfield and throw. Good seam coverage. Good coverage. They just clap the pocket, come up on them, make a sack. Outstanding play. Allardine to put it away to Freddie Millens. Freddie says, get away. Ball rolls out at the 48 of South Carolina. That is good field position for the tie. Well, fans, jpsports.com has the coverage you want. No one knows the SEC like J.P. Sports, and we bring the information to you online. Tune in each week for previews of upcoming games, broadcast information, and many other exciting features. For the inside scoop, log on to jpsports.com. Hey, quit sending Dave Rowe <laughs> obnoxious emails. Ah, those, those are great emails. <laughs> yeah. What do you think they're saying in Alabama's sideline? Please don't fumble the ball. Protect it. Pump it, Petty, McCanley, pass is caught, it. incomplete at the 23-yard line, Goodman on the stop. We have seen both Petty and Watts pump fake down the middle and throw the out pattern all day today. Now McCanley's on the outside, he just kind of gives the hedge, now he just kind of gets lost in the coverage. You see how he kind of just slowed down a little bit, allowed the corner to go over to where they thought they were going to throw it. Charles, you were a defensive back. What does that pump fake do to you? <laughs> well, it makes you flat-footed, and Andre Goodman has been victimized twice on the pump and go. One time he played it well, turned into an interception. There's Galloway on the option. Galloway breaks a couple of tackles. He takes it to the 16. Well, like I said, they're going to make the quarterback pitch the ball. That time they zeroed in on Watts as he came along the line. They're not going to allow him to turn up right there. Force the quarterback. Unfortunately for, for South Carolina, they didn't have the corner come up and make the tackle. Raison came up and played Watts. I have a feeling at halftime, that's what they talked about. Somebody's got to hit the quarterback. Got to make him pitch the ball. Beard in and tailback. Beard gets the call. Beard down to about the 12. That's going to be close to the first down. I don't know if he got it or not. Kenny Hardy on the tackle for Carolina. Well, this is just big man on big man. You see right there, 70 C. A little, little trap play out here, but look at that leg strength just to get that little seam and just keep on picking up yards. I promise you, Alabama, all they want to do is just keep that clock moving, keep moving those chains, Woo! those first downs. Hey, wow. rushing yards. Wow. 271 to 55. Yeah, but look at Watts. 151 of those is Watts himself. Galloway. Setback. He gets the handoff. Nowhere to go. Inside the 10, down to about the 9. Dave, I can tell you in the defensive huddle right now, they're drawing a line in the sand. They're saying, hey, you just got to stop them. Can't let them in the end zone. On the offensive line, they're looking at those big guys up front. Portis is back in there. You got Ephraim in the middle. You got Smiley, Britt, Ellington just saying, hey, big man, this is your best time. Just straight ahead. Nothing fancy. Just drive off the line. 
Jones and Sanders, tight ends, both in the game. The option, watch, keeps it, he'll walk into the end zone. On touch, and Tyler Watts with a nine-yard touchdown having a career afternoon in Columbia. I can tell you this, Tyler Watts has brought the option back to college football today. They have not been able to stop him all day. He reads it, just finds that little seam, and you've got to credit those big linemen. They've locked up the defensive lineman and just walks in. Look at the hole there. Anybody could run through that. That's his second rushing touchdown today. Tyler Watts has led this Alabama team on 76 offensive plays that have amassed 508 yards. Thomas's point after is up and good. Well, how do you do Tyler Watts? South Carolina now in a real big hole. They trail by a dozen, just over nine minutes to go. Alabama 36, South Carolina 24. Who would have figured this? 60 points on the board. <laughs> Still came, nine minutes. USC came in giving up just 12 points a game. Alabama came in giving up 13. That was 12th or 13th and 16th nationally. Brewer, two yards deep, a little reverse. Couple of blocks. Here's Watson. Out over the 30 to the 35. Trying to get something for a little bit of a spark there. In reverse time. I wonder why Brewer caught that ball about five yards deep, brought it out here. You see the reverse, pick up a couple good blocks right here. Good choice there. Come back up underneath. Trying to get any kind of a spark to get back in this football game. Down 12 points, they need something good to happen. Five wide receivers in the game. Petty, shotgun, gets hit as he throws it, but Brewer makes the catch and picks up the first down out over the 45. John to Ray on the stop. Boy, that was a that was a good stick right there. Watch watch Phil Petty when he drops back here. Bang! That's uh, Monroe, number uh, 22. He sticks him. He's coming after him. And they're doing that when they go into that shotgun. They're bringing outside pressure on him, trying to make the quarterback make that quick decision. But he made a good decision that time. Gain of 11 makes it first and 10. Five wide receivers. Betty out to Brewer again. Three Alabama players, four, five, six around the football. Aries Monroe leads the way. Aries Monroe, named after the Greek god of war, by the way. Ooh. Wow, he's been digging in his uh, record book. <laughs> Harry's out of Tallahassee, Florida. The senior. Phil Petty has seen quite a bit of Aries today. They've probably spoken a time or two. Yeah, they've, uh, they've checked out what each one of them ate. Right down the throat. Probably went to Huddle House. Yeah. <laughs> Petty to throw. Wide open in the middle of a seam of that zone defense. That'll be a first down to Brian Scott at the 34 of Alabama. And all of a sudden you get the feeling that South Carolina can move the ball. They may not be able to run it, but they can find him in the seam. Watch Scott, 82, just curl and make a nice target. Good, well-thrown ball. That's a rope right in there. Again, nice throw, just a level pass. He just waited for him to break into his little seam there. All of a sudden you've got the feeling that Phil Petty is gonna wake up a little bit the passing game. Gain of 35. <laughs> Pressure coming, pass is complete. That's Andre Goss. He takes it inside the 30. Ray on the stop for the tide. Boy, it's an, 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 an interesting adjustment that Alabama is doing. What they're doing, every time there's no back, quarterback sitting back there with five or four or five wide outs, they're running an edge pressure on him. Just trying to make him make that quick decision and hope that he makes it wrong. So far, Bill Petty's made some good decisions. Again, here it is. Five wide outs, no blocking back. Come with the pressure. Over the middle, caught. Derek Watson inside the five. First and goal, Gamecocks. And wake up, offense. The offense is waking up. Another Carolina. 
right there. Now watch this play. He's going to go down the field. He's going to break to the post. Right inside. Now right there, he's wide open. Use that body. Go up high. Use that body and come down with it. And great blocking across the front by the offensive line. To give him time. Watch it to the goal line. Touchdown, Carolina. We got a ball game. I think the Carolina offense, even though they score on the ground, they just realized that they can move the football through the air. And in a hurry. And in a hurry is right. That one, that five wide out formation that they used just marched them right on down the field. They didn't allow Alabama to make changes. What after oh, his pitch. Is no good. Well, it's time. Six point game, so it's not. Not that great. Uh, it's not that great. Yeah, we say that now. <laughs> Don't tell Lou Holtz that. But Derek Watson, who dropped a couple of passes early in the game, makes up for it with a 27-yard reception that sets up first and goal before the touchdown. Eric Kimry, the backup quarterback, with a nice hole. Regardless, 36-30, Bama. 66 points put on the board by Alabama and South Carolina. Six and a half to go in the football game from williams Bryce Stadium. Bill Petty marches the club down in a little over two and a half minutes to make this a six-point game. Alabama to receive the kick. It's a line drive taken by Millens at the six. Freddie out over the 20 to the 21. It has been a long, complicated story, but here's an idea of how we got here. Well, it started off with McAdley catching that touchdown pass out the flat wide open. Well, they do turn right around and find Scott, South Carolina does, for a touchdown. Then Brewer goes in the end zone for a touchdown. Back to Alabama. No pinnick this time first. And then what happens? Watts says, hey, I'll just carry it in myself. This has been an offensive show. And then this last touchdown by Watts after that long reception. You want offense? You got to love this game. <laughs> yeah, who would have thought? Wow. That's why you play the games, Dave. Amen. That's, that's why you throw away all the notes that you have. Galloway stuck after a gain of maybe two by Langston Moore and Kenny Harney. Boy, Galloway's been a workhorse. They know they're going to go to him. If you're South Carolina, you know you're going to go to him. He's had 20 carries, 75 yards. Dave. South Carolina giving up 36 points in three games to this point. Three on the play, this season. Down down 36 to today. Alabama's given up 39 points on the season combined. Today they've given up 30. Look at all those offensive numbers. And look at the great play coming from Antoine Neesmith from his free safety spot. A loss of about four on the play. Boy, Neesmith, he, just, he got hurt, he got nicked. But he's back to play. Watch number one come up here. This is the way you play the toss if you're the strong safety. You come up and you hold on and bring him down. Force the quarterback to pitch. Have that corner or that safety come up and make the play. Ding. One of his favorite things he's done while he's been here is take a computer apart and put it back together. He just took the Sam Collins block apart and went right after him on Galloway. And put him on the ground. Big third down. Listen to this crowd. Antonio Beard stopped by, guess who? Antoine Neesmith, who missed the last six games of the 2000 season with a knee injury and has been bothered by an aching back and didn't play 10 days ago against the Bulldogs. Boy, and he reads it really well. Look at him come in there. That's form tackling. That's getting that head right in there. Look at the enthusiasm. I can tell you, if you're any kind of a player and you have to sit down, well, when you get your chance to return, you're pumped. The second official punt of the game by Alabama. Yeah, Alabama taking a lot of time. Brewer. Dodges a couple of Alabama tacklers and has some room. Brewer out to the 44. And Bill Petty in South Carolina now with a chance with 3.57 to go in the game. 
I want to tell you, that first quarter had to be the longest one for Lou Holtz. And this quarter is the most exciting because he's seen his team just hang around, everything going wrong. And all of a sudden, he's got a chance to get back in and even win. As bad as it looked, Dave, at times, that is one thing about Lou Holtz's club. They never really lost it, so to speak. That's exactly right. They held the field goals, not touchdowns. That made a difference. They're back in that five wide receiver. They were really successful the last series with that. Oh! Many pump fakes. Out over midfield, about a yard shy of the first down. Hey, this is quarterback draw all the way. What you do is drop back right back and let everybody get a block. Now you pick up, hoping that everybody's wide out there. And they guess right, they picked up nine yards on the play. The five wide out set has worked to perfection for Phil Petty. Gain of nine. Petty just shy of 250 passing yards. Four wide receivers on second and one. Dave, you try to go for it here. Oh, you just keep that ball going. You gotta pick up your first down. You got two downs. There's no Lamar on this drive. Petty tries to run a little Tyler Watts option and picks up the first down. Hey, stay conservative. You got a lot of time. Hey, <laughs> Alabama's run the option successfully. Why not down Carolina? Well, Petty says, I can do that. Here's our Pizza Hut scoreboard. Ole Miss putting up 35 on Kentucky. Northwestern now trailing by three. Nebraska all over Missouri. Virginia Tech with 46 points. And North Carolina beats NC State. Big win. Well, you know what's interesting? They used Derek Watson, number 22. He can play wide out. He's a running back, but he can play wide out. He's a great receiver. Petty with a lot of time. Pass is caught inside the 10. It goes to Andre Goss, the redshirt freshman out of Conway, South Carolina. It's first and goal. Carolina. Goss is getting his shot to play. He's just a freshman. You want to use your body. Watch number 19 use his body. Step up in the pocket. His line gave him a lot of time. Look at him use his body to shield. Go up high. He's got that good vertical leap. Down inside the 10 yard line. And like you said, who would have thunk it? A gain of 37. Are we watching a miracle <laughs> unfold here? Well, I'll tell you one thing, the it, miracle was whoever chose that five wide out. <laughs> that is, that has really played to their perfection. This is unbelievable. Play action. Petty with a lot of time to the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina and Ryan Brewer. Rod Trafford, the tight end, makes the grab. And Carolina. What an excitement. I said to Charlie Strong yesterday, I said, who's the wildest guy in the field? He said, Trafford. He's the blockhead. We call him a blockhead. The point after is good, and South Carolina takes a one-point lead. 37-36, and pandemonium abound at williams Bryce Stadium. Well, then you have to score touchdowns when you get the opportunity. And they did not. Alabama scored field goal. But this is a play. Watch Trafford. He's a tight end, number 81. You talk about laying out for him. He lays out, look at Petty. He knows it right away. Again, come off the line. See him come off the line. He sneaks out into the flat, deep into the end zone. Look at him just stretch out for that ball. Great concentration. Look that ball in. Both hands around it. Look, how about Phil Petty? He hung around all game long. Tyler Watts has had the day of his life. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> That's a lot of points, partner. It's, I, I'm almost speechless. I know. I know. <laughs> no, you're not speechless. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. I got a lot to say. <laughs> you better believe it. Oh. Kickoff. Five yards deep. Carter will take a knee there. Phil Petty. 19 of 33. 291. 
three touchdowns. The South Carolina defense, Dave, has been on the field all day. Absolutely. I mean, all day. Do they have enough to withstand one final shot? I can promise you there's not a foot on the ground. This defense will rise up. Now, can Alabama move the football? That's they have, a big one. They have all day. Hey, and they got a guy, number 15, Freddie Millens, can break it from anywhere. There's Watts. No game. Langston Moore, the nose tackle. Buddha. They call him Buddha. He's a Buddha, 6'2", 300 pounds, but Langston Moore makes oh. a great move in the middle. I tell you. I, I go back to last year, Mississippi State, same scenario. Sure. I can throw the fade. Will you ever forget that? I think you've got to find Freddie Millens in here. He's their go-to guy. He's the one that's had the hot hand. He's the one can break it. Watts running. Out of bounds. Flag down at the 20. Watts gets to the 25. 135 on the clock. The Tide has a couple of timeouts remaining. Now... You see, it's illegal motion. It's going to go against Alabama. It's going to set them deeper. I can tell you right now, Charlie Strong is down there saying, don't get beat deep. Shade towards Freddie Millens. He's their go-to guy. If they're going to beat you, they're going to have to march down the field. Don't let them get behind you where they can throw that deep one. Because we know Watson's got a strong only arm. only had six men on the line of scrimmage. Foul is five yards from the previous spot. Still second down. Charles. Hey, Dave Rowe is right about that. you got to find number 15, but the beauty of this game all day long for Alabama has been that they've played from the front. This is the first time they've been down and they've been methodical the whole game. Now they have to speed up. Ten penalties for the tie. Clock ticks. Pass is caught. Brianna Sloot, nowhere to go. Oh, what a hustle there. You go out, you go along the line of scrimmage. I think that was George Goss, number 99, ran out there and made that tackle. That's what you got to do. You got to hustle through the play. South Carolina in a prevent, three men rushing the football, dropping eight back off the line. Don't get beat deep. Beat deep. Alabama find Freddie Miller. Third and 12. Watch. Down at the 20. John Stamper, the senior out of Andrews, South Carolina. Boy, you got to credit the secondary. No place to go. Look to the right. Come back. Look to the left. Stamper, number 91, gets in there. Timeout on the field. It is fourth down and nine. This, without a doubt, is the ball game. No, that's a... That's a great statement. Well, let me tell you what I would do. If I'm Alabama, I'd run Freddie Millens in that short motion and let him turn upfield. When you get motion, you get one-on-one -on -one coverage. And then let him come across the middle, see if you can find him. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. You see him right in the middle of Huddle there, number 15. He's the important go-to guy. Charles, what do you think about four Hey, Dave, guys, I got, I'm going to pose the question to you. Do you just sit back and zone in this situation and give Watts time to throw? I don't. If I'm Charlie Strong, I go to my strength. I send someone, but I'm smart about it. It's not an all-out go after him, but you send someone to make sure he steps up and throws on rhythm as opposed to sitting back and finding time and letting receivers run free. Oh, Charles, they've been getting pressure on him with the three-down linemen. Give us defensive linemen a chance. Hey, they can get pressure on him. Come on, Charles. Look at them making play on this one, big guy. <laughs> celebration a dead ball penalty but you're right Dave they didn't have a chance in this game you remember that first quarter I don't think they ran a play oh unbelievable that was a dead ball 
unsportsmanlike in South Carolina, followed by first down. Here's the fourth down and nine play. Millen slips. The ball was a little bit low. And, you know, it's I, what an effort by South Carolina. But Alabama, they owned this game oh, they did. for 55 to 60 minutes. Well, and give credit a little bit. I know it's really disappointing to Coach Fran. But give credit to South Carolina. They went for that five wide out with no backs. They completed marks from right down the, down the field. You made mention of it. No time. They came right back with the same formation. They used Derek Watson as one of the five wide outs. And again, marched right down the field. What a gutsy, gutsy performance for the Colts in the South Carolina Gamecocks. How about Phil Petty? You're sitting over there, and you're watching. You're watching the other team's quarterback. He throws for 300 yards, runs for 300 yards. How about Skip giving Dad a hug? They said they were going to open it up offensively. And I don't know how much of the playbook they used, but they put up 37 points, was, which was just good enough. This one will, folks, go down in the annals of South Carolina football history. They break the 10-game losing skid to the Alabama Crimson Tide. What a game in Columbia. We will come back. Stay with us on Jefferson Pilot Game of the Week. Might have just been the game of the year.